Welcome back, everybody. Welcome back to Phil's Recap and Review. Better Call Saul, Season 6, Episode 11, Breaking Bad. And wow, what an episode of television. They lived up to it with an episode title like Breaking Bad coming back into the series. We did flash in time. We get a parallel between another Gene story progressing that storyline as Gene heads down to his disaster. I don't care. I, there could be a lot of theories where Gene's going, but he's heading for a one-way trip to Disasterville. That's for damn sure. So many great Saul Goodman one-liners here in the scene with Jesse and this in Walt and the scene with Mike. Uh, did this show handle the first of the Walter and Jesse cameos correct? You goddamn right it did! Wow! First of all, I know it's really cheesy. I like how they put them in. They they did the scene I wanted to see, or one of the scenes I wanted to see more of. And even just little things like hearing Jesse go, Who the hell's Lalo? I thought really worked well. I like how we didn't have to... I like how, without even saying it, you could tell they listened to some of the criticisms from the El Camino thing, and they didn't put Walter in that bald... That bald wig. I'm just going to call it a bald wig instead. You know, they picked a scene that he wore something on his head. But I thought it did add a lot to the interaction of how he... How you see how... Saul made Walter as much as Walter chose him in the sense of uh, Mike warning him against him. He pushed that through. And then you see all those parallels. The amazing transition that we see that with going from the grave to him lying in his bed. I don't know if it's on point to say, oh, this means he's definitely going to die or something like that. But I just think that to, to symbolize that his interactions with Walter White led to his disaster, led to essentially what his death is. Because right now, he's just, he's going, he's walking through the last days of his life, essentially. I don't know if his life or him going to jail or, my, my thought that we're going to end on some sort of court case in the final episode is is looking a little bit better because, because obviously we see our preview for next week. And I'm all over the place because I'm super excited coming off this episode. I'll introduce you guys in the live motherfucking trap in a second here, but it's great to hear see all of you guys. Let's let's get this let's get this graphic down and get get into this. But what just what an episode! So much happened here, so much to unpack. Obviously, we get a Kim thing that uh, he he hears from Francesca. We get a whole big info dump scene with Francesca, which was essential to get all this information post Breaking Bad. So we got a lot of sequel stuff in this episode to finish off the storyline. That's why it being called Breaking Bad is just perfect. If anyone wants to get their questions or comments in here, you can do that. You can call on in at 781-990-8509. Again, that's 781-990-8509. Leave us a voicemail. Let us know what you think. Get your voice in the show. You can also text that number if I miss your chat, but I will try to jump in the chat as well. Share your thoughts. Ask any questions. We're only down to two episodes, but I'm not, I'm not worrying about that right now. I don't want to get into the cold panic that we only have two more episodes left of this awesome series i want to get into it and really bathe in the fact that this was really excellently done the back and forth edits between the two timelines i thought really worked seeing how saul essentially is breaking bad in that own timeline or gene is because he can't he can't hold it in anymore this isn't fun in the last episode we saw and that's where last episode becomes kind of important just to show that when he touches it again the first time you try it after you quit something it's fun you enjoy it but he's at that point now where it's really negatively affecting him in some ways and you're seeing that it's bleeding him on a one-way disaster he almost was at a good point but then when he got whatever information that was about kim which we'll unpack here tonight. I put out the question in the live chat, and I'd love for you guys to jump in and answer that. And if you're watching this later, put it in, put it in the comment section. Was he talking to Kim? Did Kim just basically tell him to fuck off? Like He got her on the phone. He's like, Kim, 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 oh my goodness, you're working at this. Where was she working at again? A, a sprinkler a sprinkler place or something? Uh, anyways, he knew how to get a hold of her once Francesca said that. Great Francesca episode, too. But so we, so we called her. Did... Was it her that said, Jimmy, fuck off. You know, I don't really care about you. I don't want to talk to you. You know, get get the hell away. Or did he find some bad information out about her? And or did someone say she doesn't because she wouldn't know who it was on the phone. So she couldn't be like, I don't want to talk to you. So it's either some 
in my mind, some poor information, like she's dead or something, even if she isn't really dead, or she moved, or this isn't where she, you know, she moved. No one knows where she is, even that. But would that drive him that angry where he's pounding the poor payphone? There aren't many of those left, Jimmy. Well, I guess there were then. But I don't know. Great episode. I was bouncing back and forth. I love this transitions from the color to the black and white. It was done really seamlessly. And the the film stock and the way they made the the way they made the Breaking Bad scenes look like Breaking Bad, just even in the, the film stock and the way it all came together. I love the silence you get a lot in the black and white scenes. But we're going to get all into this. We're going to break down this episode, watch it back here on on uh, on my trusty little phone here. We're going to we're going to watch back the episode, listen back to the episode. I go through all of this, but there were, there was so much that happened here. And we ended with Jimmy acting with Gene acting like an idiot. What he did with What's the guy's name? Some people in the live chat help me. What, what what's uh what's Jeffy's brother, buddy's name? Is it Dylan? Is it, is it is that where we're going with? Is it is it Dylan? Whatever his name is. That was that was just stupid. And he's being very very not careful with Marion. I know I know it seems obvious, so obvious now that it seems like it might not actually happen, but he is flaunting this in front of Marion and she's already She's already a little dubious of this situation. The moment he left the room to give her cat videos to go hang out with Jeffy, because she knows no one wants to hang out with Jeffy. Yeah, this is this is where I like new Jeff because there's a vibe here where where Carol Burnett knows no one would really want to hang out with her son. <laughs> so, so she that immediately become makes her a little a little nervous. They made a couple comments about the laptop. The laptop. I don't know. I think. I think the perspective that a lot of people have, it seems like they're heading in that direction that Carol Burnett is maybe who calls the cops that we see at the end of the, in our preview for next episode. But in our previews for next episode, they're not always exactly what they seem, so maybe it's not as obvious. But I think, in my mind, this show a lot of times shows you what they're going to do, obviously, and then they just do it, and they do it so awesome, it doesn't matter if you know what's going to happen. And I feel like everything that Gene is doing is telling us he's going to get caught. He's not he's not being careful anymore at all. He's flaunting it. And everything that we heard from Francesca, people are still following her. Skylar made a deal. Jesse's nowhere to be found. He's off the reservation. He's the big fish in the situation and there are still people looking for him and his face is known. And if it doesn't just have to be Marion, it could be anybody. And it could be Dylan deciding to be like, fuck this guy. Uh, and if they reach in and they really look in, he's easy to kind of make. So he, he needs to, if he doesn't, if he's not just trying to get caught, <laughs> but in a sense, maybe he is just because he wants to get out of this prison like thing that he's in. But still, Mr. Mr. Gene, be a little careful. Yeah, you know, a spoonful of sugar. Let let this one go. They were right. This dude, this dude didn't do nothing wrong for you. Like the guy that ended up having cancer too. And it almost seemed like, and this is how I interpreted it. And you guys in the live chat and comments, we got we already got eight voicemails that we're gonna get to. And we're gonna get to all of your voicemails tonight. So keep them coming. Uh, the I think what the episode to me was telling me, in a sense that. At first, I read the scene where he's talking to the, the cancer guy and he tells him his diagnosis, he tells him the situation. And what I read in Saul's in Gene's eyes was feeling bad, feeling like, oh, I can't go through with this. This is this is the wrong thing. This is bad. This isn't the okay guy, we're gonna skip this one. But instead, it was the opposite. It made him more want to take this guy's money. Because, as he said, just because someone's sick doesn't make them not a dick. I know this firsthand. I love how we got to hear Jesse call Walter a dick again. I, I'm sorry. I'm bouncing back and forth. But uh, that 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 cameo scene was everything I wanted it to be. Didn't ma didn't matter so much. Crazy to the plot. Added some depth to uh, to Breaking Bad. I mean, added some depth to that scene of Breaking Bad and was hilarious and well done. I, I, I really loved it. But. Back to, back to that. I think Jimmy really almost wanted to do it more. He wanted to uh, he wanted to attack this guy because 
because he was sick and because it reminded him of a Walter situation. Not this guy reminded him of Walter, but just this guy being sick. He's just like, fuck that. No, no, I'm, t- I'm taking some back. The, I, at a moment, I thought Jimmy was there. And at times, I think we're watching Saul Goodman come back through Gene. But Gene's somebody different. He's a horrible, bitter dude. And especially once he got that bad news about Kim, wh- whether it's Kim never wants to talk to him again. And if I see you again, I'll fucking kill you, Jimmy. Or, or whatever she says to him in that moment or something else, it's very awesome. And we got our first Super Chat donator of the night. We got T, amazing episode. Walt and Jesse were magic. I was cracking up with those scenes. It is great. I love uh, when he, he calls them out on, uh, Saul makes a line about them being a great comedy duo. And that's what I like. That's what I wanted with the scene with Walt and Jesse. I wanted to see that Walt, Walt and Jesse dynamic, that ping pong, the odd couple thing, and seeing... Bob Odenkirk fit into that perfect and be sort of an outsider watching it while it was happening and making comments on it. I thought it worked really well. And if it was just an added on thing and didn't didn't really matter or didn't add, but I like how the episode started out with the hint to that scene. They just hit the ball running with that. And then they hinted through that, through the episode and brought it back, back and forth, back and forth. Uh, and I thought it really worked. I, I feel like the actors brought it in their performance too. It felt like they were in the moment in the scene. It's, it wasn't, didn't feel out of context to breaking bad, even though, you know, Aaron Paul looks older, but it it didn't throw me off as much as it did in the scene in breaking bad when he's trying to play young Jesse as old Jesse. For some reason, this scene didn't bother me quite as much, but thank you so much for the super chat donation. Let me spin the wheel of, of spins for you. Spin the wheel. The wheel is spun. Let's see what you get for your Super Chat donation. Every time we get a Super Chat donation, I spin that wheel back that, and we get it. It's a drink, so I'm going to drink this up. Toast to all of you guys. Thank you so much for the Super Chat donation. Every time I we do some of the other things on there, play a little trumpet solo, play a stupid drum solo, jump around like an idiot. You know, the normal stuff. Thank you guys, everyone, for tuning in and this week. Mm-mm-mm. To talk about Breaking Bad. I didn't think I'd be talking about Breaking Bad again. Damn. <laughs> I know, Melly Mel. It's good. We've come a long way. Thank you to everyone tuning in right now. If you can, if you're here enjoying the fun, hit that like button and help push this out to more and more people. If you're watching live right now, the more you like, the more you comment in that chat. It helps it get out to more people. Share it if you can somewhere. Let's get this up as much as we can and get as many folks as we can in here to talk about this episode break Breaking Bad. I, I was gonna say this episode of Breaking Bad. It was a it was a Better Call Saul episode, but it earned its right to be called Breaking Bad by giving us all the information, being the truest epilogue episode to Breaking Bad that we've had so far, with all the information that we got through uh, through Francesca. It, this episode confirms to me we're not gonna see Kubi. Uh, even though uh, even though I would have liked to see him, we got to see Huel, but I don't think they could figure out the scheduling. Uh, but but they did mention they did mention him in this episode. We get basically mention of all of our better call all of our Breaking Bad characters get a little lip service through Francesca. We get a little bit more of Francesca, which was really fun to get more of her character in extended scenes. Uh, and of course, we got this amazing cameo. But there's a lot to unpack. Frame for frame, beat for beat. So let me get into the live chat and open this up to some of you guys and what you think about that episode. Thank you, Mel. Garrick says, how about that? Uh, the detail that Skylar White took the deal? Yeah, absolutely. That's one of those moments where we get these little Breaking Bad sequel moments that, yes, Better Call Saul has always been a sequel and a prequel series, but we haven't really got a lot of the important sequel information of stuff that actually happened post-Breaking Bad. We got it all slapped across our face in this episode in a good way, and I enjoyed it. It was like, bam, right across the face. And he's beyond, he is Frank Ocean. He's beyond saving at this point. We want to look at the good, I think, Jimmy, the, the Jimmy in him, the good in Jimmy. If you want to say that, yeah, Slippin' Jimmy's a, a fun-loving con man, and then Saul Goodman is is that to a little bit further of a degree, but still buried in there. There's somewhat of a good person that's delusional about some of the bad stuff they're doing. Gene T- Takovic is a horrible, horrible person. <laughs> He's horrible. He doesn't care. He doesn't care. He wants to punish you for being a good person. And I think maybe there was a moment where he could have been saved when he heard that 
Kim asked about him. And then whatever he found out in that information was, all in all, it's just another brick in Gene's wall. And that was it. It's done. I might have to record that song. I might have to do a, I might have to do a parody song of another brick in the wall to, uh, to, uh, to, it's all in all, it's just another brick in Jimmy's wall. Yeah, abs- Jasmine T. Daniel, thank you so much for popping in. Well, the episode is titled Breaking Bad, and we did see him, essentially Gene, break bad. And we, we've always said, or I've always said, is Gene as bad of a person as Walter? And I think there were some parallels in this episode of Gene becoming not as bad in a sense, but still soulless in the way that Walter became at a certain point in time. And oh my goodness, uh, Mark says that was not Kim on the phone. Take that, take back the Niffy hate people. People need to suspend some disbelief when it comes to actors. Emerald, thank you. And we might land on a drum solo if uh, we get 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 another super chat for the end of the night. Oh, the do- the dog's done. The dog's like, oh, I'm off camera, ladies and gentlemen. Lotus has left the building. Uh, knew they were revisiting the hole in the desert scene. They gave Gene the inspiration to break bad. Drink responsibly to your hose. Exactly. Get one of those hoses to drip them out. The crossfo- the crossroads felt a little bit cast away. They didn't linger there too long. It was just a quick moment. I feel like the crossroads thing didn't even need to be in it. It's almost something they put in there for the trailer just to uh, just just to add that mystery of him making his decisions in a moment about which direction he's going to go. Uh, and in, in that sense, I thought at that moment he was gonna he was gonna go drive to Kim, but instead he chose to make a decision to to reach out to her. I believe that was the moment. We don't need no. Uh, <laughs> We don't need no Chuck McGill. Oh, if you don't, if you shit in a sunroof, you don't get your meat. Why would you shit in a sunroof if you can't get your meat? Um, so Jimmy wants to take his frustrations out after the call. Man, he should seek a therapist, not go and hunt down, <laughs> hunt down people. And I don't know if, are we supposed to think that all these people that he's, he's going after are bad people? Is he, is he, is he Kevin Costnering, Robin Hood man and thiefing this? I don't know. Uh, or if they're supposed to be, uh, just people he's going after in any way, shape or form. Yeah. I think he's just out of control. He's like, he's a, he's a madman that's gone too far and he just doesn't care anymore he's he's get he keeps elevating it he's he's like now it's that point where he's getting away with it and he knows how hot he is but yeah let, let's see how far he can push this i don't care anymore I don't, I don't care anymore and it's it's heading down but could anything wake him up to care again and get any sense of self-reliance but now with all of his money gone them still after him after all this time there's no coming back from this place and he really does feel stuck in that prison stuck in that grave of the world that being around Walter White and not listening to Mike's advice what's the moral of the story listen to Mike Ehrman Trout he's the one that knows what the hell's going on <laughs> he re- he was he was really demented he's demented art and soul <laughs> Jimmy is seriously an evil genius with all his schemes all the fallacies Love you. Love you, Marco. Thank you. Francesca is a slumlord. Nippy is a fine, fine dog. Fine, fine dog. And thank you to everyone calling on it. Let's uh, let's see. Oh, yeah, I know. I know that number. Not going there. Area code 407. Let's go. Let's open up the phone lines. Hey, Phil. This is Joel from Florida again. I just had to say, too, I forgot to mention, I really, really love the transition. Oh, wait. I'm going to play your first message first. <laughs> Hey, Phil, this is Joel from Florida. Just got done watching the episode on uh, AMC, and I have to say, uh, I really enjoyed this episode. Um, I felt like I was on the edge of my seat quite a bit. Um, it was really nice seeing, of course, Walter and Jesse. And about them, I mean, when I, when I watched Walter and Jesse, you know, Brian Cranston and Aaron Paul performing the characters tonight, it almost felt like I was watching Breaking Bad. That's how good they are at portraying those characters, even after all these years. So the the, the dynamic was great. Um, I really enjoyed the Yeah, and I, uh, before I'm going to let you play the rest of your message, but absolutely, I thought that was the best thing that they did, and they did it similar even in that one scene we got uh, a couple seasons ago on Better Call Saul where they showed him in the office. 
I thought that was really well done the way that they make you feel like in those Breaking Bad scenes, you're watching Breaking Bad, the way the angles are slightly different than it is in Better Call Saul, which is in Better Call Saul, it's a little bit more clarity. The the, the coloring is different. The filming's different. They, they set it up to make it feel like a Breaking Bad scene right from the beginning point of this episode, which I was really impressed by and really enjoyed. The, the switch between, you know, the Gene timeline and the the beginning of the Breaking Bad timeline. It was cool to see Mike again. That was really nice to see him in these final episodes, you know, watching him warn Saul about how Walter is bad news, even before Mike dealt with Walter personally. So, you know, Saul should have listened. Absolutely. He should should always listen to Mike. And yes, did you guys know that on instead of watching this video right now, you can go watch cat videos on here? It's you can do that. You still can do this. And uh, someone pointed this out. I, I can't. I think it might have been on Reddit or a Facebook post. I was reading. Someone pointed out that the, good. Pay attention to details. They actually show like when uh, Carol Burnett was watching YouTube. It was it was YouTube from that year. Like they they made sure they they made it look like YouTube from that year. So so bravo to them. So um, <clears throat> one thing I do wish though is that they would have shown us the conversation in the phone booth during the Gene timeline. Mm -hmm. I want to say it was Kim he was talking to. Maybe she was telling him not to call work because he's, you know, a wanted criminal. But I'm a wanted man. I don't know. I hope they touch more on that later. But uh, the cliffhanger was real nice. I'm curious to see what happens next. So yeah, and absolutely, I think I think they wouldn't have cut the cut what we're hearing in the phone booth if we weren't going to find out what's in the phone booth later. I think that has a lot to do with. However, they're going to end the series in some association with Kim. We got another super chat donation from the wonderful Jack Me Off. Uh, smash that like button, Phil Roos. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. Let me take another drink for you and uh, pop that up. Super. Let me. I got to spin the wheel for you. But let me play uh, the rest of your other voicemail to finish that off. Hey, Phil. This is Joel from Florida again. I just had to say too. I forgot to mention. I really, really love the transitions. Um, they were done extremely well, so kudos to the writers and the camera crew for that. Also, um, I have to say there was a moment where I was kind of irritated with Gene because of the way he was treating Jeff's friend. I think his name was Buddy. Oh, Buddy. Yeah, uh, I really didn't appreciate that. Whatever Gene's angle is, I, I don't know, but I think that he was – it almost felt like watching Heisenberg from Season 5 Breaking Bad. Like, he was just evil. And um, I don't know what his end game is, but I just I really didn't feel too comfortable with the way he was talking to to the Jeff's friend about the the guy with the cancer. That was that was pretty messed up. Uh, yeah, you no, know, it really was, and it was stupid too. It's just it's in a calculated move to do calculated uh, cons, and when you're in such a precarious position that Gene is in with the feds trying to find you and and really trying to protect your identity at any point in time, he's already pushing it working in a public setting when he was a semi-celebrity. He's already pushing it some more now, pushing someone like some, someone like Gene, uh, someone like Jeff around. And w if that guy's name is Buddy, for some reason I thought it was Dylan, but Buddy, whatever, whatever, whatever that dude's name is, pushing him like that I think is just stupid. I think it's just stupid. Oh, thank you, Brandon. I, I appreciate that. <laughs> so yeah, I, I notice how I smile. I'm like, I'm like, I don't read any comments. And I'm like, oh, Brandon. That, that's a good comment, man. That, that's a good comment. And what do we land on? I land on, oh, music. I got to play some music here for a second. Uh, I'm not going to, let me distract people for a second. Here you go. Your drum solo. Thank you so much for that super chat donation, Jack Me Off. I appreciate that. And keep them coming and spin the wheel and all sorts of nonsense can, can arise. Let's get to another voicemail from area code uh, 704. Hey, Phil. It's Marco Jones calling from Charlotte, North Carolina. Welcome, Marco. Uh, great episode. It was amazing. Um, it's pretty cool to see where Buzz from Home Alone ended up the rest of his life in Nebraska. <laughs> But, oh uh, my god oh my oh my fucking thank you 704 you you win my award of the night i i don't know what i can give you i don't have a lot to give i don't have a lot to give <laughs> you guys are given to me i appreciate it i don't have a lot to give but i was trying to place where i knew him from oh my goodness so that it's the dude from homo it's buzz from home alone oh um, but thank you thank you marco oh my goodness i could not place who that guy was from and now I know. For his life <laughs> in Nebraska. But um, 
Yeah, it was good to see Walt and Jesse. And, you know, um, they made Walt look a lot younger for some reason. It was pretty awesome. But um, <laughs> love the after show, man. Love the stream. Keep it up. Thank you so much. They did. Walter looked great. Walter looked great. Jesse looked older and Walter looked younger. Uh, but Brian Kritzer looks great. Uh, thank you, Sergio. I, I will definitely play another one. If uh, when we get super chats, if I'm lucky enough, I'll spin the, spin the wheel and uh, play play some uh, drums if if they land on. I was also got a. Tr I think trumpets on there too. It's uh, I might have to close my windows for that one. But if you guys want to call on in, it's seven eight one nine nine zero eight five zero nine. We have got a bunch of voicemails and a bunch of text. If I miss your chat, you can also text in that number seven eight one nine nine zero eight five zero nine. Get your comments and questions in about this episode of Breaking Bad on Better Call Saul. The first bar, yeah, the first bar guy that Gene Fleece, that's uh, Buzz from Home Alone. Oh my goodness, I I was watching it like I knew this guy. I I thought it was maybe this actor from Mad Men that let himself go a little bit or something. I I don't know. I, I was trying to place him like, what do I know this actor from? And thank you so much for letting me know. It's great. Th could not tell. Uh, <laughs> couldn't tell which one was Walt. <laughs> Cranston can assume almost any role and look naturally. Uh, and uh, my prediction is Walt dies. Holy shit, we got another Super Chat donation. Phil, you should wear a Jeff Styles sweater next week. I don't know if I have one, like a Jeff I, I might need to, uh, I might need to get one with your donation. I might need to buy a, uh, buy, buy a, uh, a story. But, oh my God, thank you so much for that Super Chat donation. Uh, Jeffrey, I should wear a Jeff Style thing for next year. Let me, let me start a voicemail while I am doing this. This is area code 786. Hello again. So I just had one more follow-up question I, I thought of as I hung up before. Um, do you think that Gene's desperation to, you know, make all this money doing the scam was driven by his phone call to Kim, or do you think it was, some sort of internal motiv motivation to, you know, feel alive again or, or something along those lines. Uh, those lines. Just Great question. I think what drove him in that moment was Kim is his last connection to humanity. And when he heard that she talked to him or she cared about him, he realized it was all done. Everything is done at this point in time. There's nothing to kind of really keep going for. Not that he was always hoping to get back together with her, but the fact she asked about him and reached out to him gave him some sort of hope that he could have somebody that knows him and cares about him again in his life. Not in a romantic way, necessarily. Just that someone that was important to him, there's, there's like a reason to live. You know, you know, like, so, oh, they asked about me? Oh, she, so she's going to want to know. We might, have a, we might have a positive relationship because we don't know what happened in between. I think in the next episode, we're going to see that this wasn't the first time he contacted her. He's tried to contact her before. She, they've had some sort of bumpy interactions. I feel like the next episode will definitely have Kim in it and see more of her progression through this time period and her interactions. Uh, so I do think it was the impetus by what happened with Kim to kind of push him in that direction. Thank you so much, Jeffrey Thompson. What that land up? It landed on make up a song or something. So I guess I have to play the drum again in a moment. We'll do that. I'll do that in a moment for you, Jeffrey. Thank you so much for that super chat donation. Uh, what it was to say, I know, I know it sounds weird. Someone, someone saying I look like, uh, Someone say I look like Weird Al or something. Uh, didn't know Weird Al liked Better Call Saul this much. Guess this is what he's up to next, these days. It is true. Better uh, Weird Al is a huge fan of this show. I know that. Uh, I know that because he's my dad. And I, I know that for a fact. Uh, Weird Al and I are good, good buddies. I, 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 I used to have I used to have the picture on point I don't I don't always have it but uh, but uh, but I'll try I'll try to I'll try to I'll try to pick it up at some point in the evening uh, I do have a picture with Jeff with uh, with the weird Al and I but I, I will look for a um, for a Jeff type sweater to wear for for one of these weeks and we got another super chat donation from Lalo Salamanca they dug up that hole and triggered me not gonna lie and you got to hear the wonderful Aaron Paul say your name Lalo that's always a benefit. Yeah, fucking bitch, you're right. 
Oh, we got Tristan. Thank you. You're a cool guy, man. No, it's all good, man, Tristan. You're an awesome dude. And thank you so much to all of you guys joining in tonight in the live chat. You guys make this so much fun. You make watching these episodes so much more fun for me. And I think it's so great to get all of us together after the episode and jump in here and babble about what we just watched. So, and keep the calls coming. 781-990-8509. 781-990-8509. Let's listen to the first part of our last call message hey so i just had a question about the uh the first scene where we see uh walt and jesse show up again uh i'm trying to figure out like what the you know the thematic purpose of that scene was you know because they kind of have a little bit of small talk about uh, lalo saul sees uh walt cough and you know just kind of gives them a look but i was just wondering what you think the the purpose of that scene was in, in like the bigger picture you know thanks how I take that scene is to show more about how Saul had a lot more agency in the situation because he found out he wanted to learn about them, that they connected with him, that he fought for this. He won this in the boardroom, like Don Draper in the boardroom, winning the, winning the work. So in a sense, you could think that Walter was this vehicle of destruction, but, but Jimmy did this to himself. At least that's how I took it. He was he was flattered. This whole situation, instead of scaring him, sort of showed him initiative and made him think there's something about this guy. And I think all of the moments in this episode that with Walter in that whole situation was showing the impending destruction of his own life. It, that every time he flirts with something, flirts with a big scam flirts with something he's playing with fire and he finally got burned with this one and it's those and it's always those ones when you you think maybe I shouldn't do this but then you do it uh the movie clerks <laughs> the original script of the movie's clerks had dante getting killed at the end it's not the not the real ending so I'm not spoiling anything and I'm not supposed to be here today the day he's not supposed to be there he's the one he ends up getting killed this one, the one, he, he has Mike checking out every possible lead, every possible situation. The one that Mike warns him off again, but he's like, yeah, you know, I, I see something here. I'm going with my instincts. That's the one that screws you over. And I think a lot of the theme and a lot of the point of the, the scene that we chose to see was to see that, that he's so, he had so much agency in the way this all happened. And of course, there's more to unpack there, and I'm just kind of babbling a little bit about it, but a great question and something we'll definitely pick apart even more tonight when we rewatch the scene. This is one of those episodes that begs me for a rewatch right now. Tristan, thank you so much for the super chat. You guys need super chats are great. Getting in late. You're never too late, Kevin. You're getting in early here. We're just, we've just started things. We're, we're only on, we're on very early where it's going to be a long night talking about this episode. So you're perfect. You're at the perfect time, Kevin. Getting in late. But I, but, but was Walter's blue meth when they, but was Walter's meth blue when they first met Saul? Thought it was white. Sorry if somebody already brought that up. That No one already brought that up. That's a good question. I must admit it's something I did pass my mind through that moment. I was like, oh, is he already is he already at this point considering himself Heisenberg and the blue meth? And, and I think so. Yes. I think they had already they had already done the uh, stolen the 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 stuff that made it blue. Uh, what was that stuff called that they had to steal when they stole the the the, the, the bins of it? I'm pretty sure it was blue at this point and he was already sort of making waves and this is at the point where they needed to get the lawyer. So I, th I think they were already on the ground running and selling and selling pretty good at this point. But good, good question. And thank you so much for the super chat donation. You guys are amazing. It was blue. They first gave the blue and, uh, and oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. The bots are here. We've, we've made it everybody. The bots are here. What's the bots are here. Thank you, Jackie C. You're amazing. Uh, the methylamine. Thank you, Tom. I couldn't think of meth. <laughs> so, so many things with these series. I, I can't think of methylamine. What's my problem? I don't, I know. I don't know anything about this show. <laughs> so let's get to more. We got more voicemails tonight. This is awesome. Thank you everyone for calling on in. Keep the calls coming. Keep the texts coming. 781-990-8509. Oh, I forgot to mention our wheel of magic from one of our super chatters landed on. Oh, wow. We're all getting a little Breaking Bad Dutch angle there for a second. Uh, <laughs> landed on everyone drink. So wherever you are, whatever you're doing, if you're drinking water, 
or coffee or uh, Coca-Cola Classic, Red, White, and You. Pick it up. Let's <laughs> toast to all of us. we got two more episodes, two more parties after this, but this party's not done yet, everyone. Uh, as the Klingons say, I'm such a geek. Today is a good day to die, but not today. Not today. We got two. We got two more of these things. We're not going anywhere yet. Mm-hmm. I am getting nostalgic already for the show and not wanting it to end, but I'm not gonna not gonna not take the opportunity to really enjoy these last two weeks of this amazing show. And uh, and yeah, let's let's listen to a few more uh, a few more voicemails here. Where is it? Did I, did I play this one already? Yeah, hello, it's Mike again. Mike Airman Trout. Breaking Bad, Mike here. Dude. You know, in all timelines. You know, you know what, Mike? Breaking Bad, Mike seems a little bit more spry. I don't, I don't know why. You seem a little bit more spry. And I love how Saul was ragging on you in the way you're moving, dude. And I've walked in on Saul doing worse than that. Like this one time, <laughs> I. <laughs> he he cut off. He cut off. It was too much for uh, Mike Airman Trout. He's done. He's gone to hang out with uh, Kaylee Two Electric Boogaloo, and it's it's amazing. Let's go. We got uh, we got six five one. Here we go. Let's do it. Yo, what's good, Phil? <clears throat> Matt from Minnesota. Welcome, Matt. Uh, I just wanted to say a couple of things on this episode. Number one, um, I thought the strong points were so good. The morality choices that Saul and Gene had to make parallels between them unreal but just like a lot of the episodes i felt like some of the scenes dragged on other scenes other intriguing moments could have been could have happened with some of the um things that were going on some of the scenes just felt dragged on also i hope i'm wrong but it just feels so inevitable inevitable now that he's going to go to jail and someone like kim is probably going to be his lawyer and stuff like that i just wish um, the Walt and Jesse scene uh, would have made would have been a different scene with all of them in it. And also, I hate to say this, but you got to be critical sometimes. I thought Jesse just didn't seem into it, and I thought he just wasn't. I thought Aaron Paul wasn't acting like uh, he used to with Jesse, which makes sense. But it stood out wasn't wasn't good. But overall, I, I enjoyed the episode. Just a little slow. Thank you. No, I hear you. And uh, even if I don't agree with your points, I like to have a forum to let you uh, release them and put them out here. And, and absolutely, if you're watching this, watching my live stream, and you're going, this hyperbolic, uh, <laughs> silly Billy gumdrops here, jumping around like a crazy idiot, I disagree. Uh, please call on in, tell us your Christmas. That was some constructive feedback on the episode. And absolutely, uh, I, I hear what you're saying. I enjoy the Je the Jesse and Walt thing. I think I liked how Aaron Paul played it a little underplayed and in ways where he just started to dick, like line, line, to, uh, line to Brian Cranston. I thought they both had still had excellent chemistry and it bounced off it kind of their chemistry with each other took away the, from the fact that Aaron Paul is you know 40 years old playing 20 year old in this scene uh but but again I I, I hear I hear you other pe certain people are going to take things in different ways and thank you so much for the call Aaron Paul seemed older than Brian Cranston said Breezy P <laughs> we might see more Jesse in the last two we're going to see one scene of each of them in these final two episodes at some point. I assume they're going to be in the next episode with Vince. But that's one of those things that we have had spoiled for us. There's going to be three scenes. Uh, and we've only seen one of them so far. There's going to be another scene singular with Jesse. And a singular Walter scene. And uh, Brian Chris was spot on. Feels so real. Not so much about Aaron Paul. F fair enough. Fair enough. For folks. It's tough. I mean Aaron Paul's a tough one. In, in a sense. Unless. Uh, they, I wonder if he could get back into his uh, Bojack Todd character. Yeah. Hey, Todd! Oh, my Todd, my Todd is breaking my camera. Let me drive, yo. And when they were arguing about the car, I don't know. I'm, I'm a fan. I'm a fanboy. I, I was, I was enjoying it. I was, I was, I was going off in silly land during all that. And uh, th thank you, caller. Uh, area code eight one three. Let's listen to part of eight one three's message. Hey, Phil, it's Chris. Just wanted to say, hey, great episode tonight. I really enjoyed it. We got a, you know, I think it was like an hour and 20 minutes. It's a little bit longer. And uh, Aaron, the reason why Aaron Paul couldn't do it because he's really a host. That, that was That's the real reason. Um, <laughs> I was hoping it would be longer. I, every time it broke, I was waiting for, you know, the 
Peter Gold and Vince Gilligan, you know, names. But overall, I mean, this episode was great. I love seeing, you know, Francesca, the phone call. We finally got the phone call. Um, you know, he had a lot more money. Obviously, a lot of that was seized, but, you know, everything he has and his, all the diamonds and all that, you know, like Francesca said, it wasn't, you know, chump change. You know? No, exactly. He, we find out that all of his money, all of his stuff, everything got seized. But we know that he still has whatever is on him. So could that be part of the reason why he decided to scam more? Because he doesn't have quite as much money other than those diamonds left than we actually think. And he doesn't want to go through the process of cashing those in and going through all of that. So he might be running lower on money. I like how he left the money for Francesca in a very Andy Dufresne kind of way. That was very cool. Yeah, Aaron Paul did seem like he was on barbiturates as PZP. You guys in the live chat are cracking me up. Plus the amazing way they managed the uh, the aging issues of Aaron Paul with light. Come on, be fair. These violent delights have violent ends, John. Are those the only scenes we'll see Walt and Jesse Dustin? As I said, we're going to see one more scene with Jesse alone and one scene with Walter alone. Uh, and if there's more and we don't know, there possibly could be more. But as of what we've heard so far, that's what we see. I also do see our text messages. We've got nine text messages waiting. I will get to all of your text messages. Just going to get through our final three voicemails first and uh, start to open this up or two voicemails. This is area code 310. Hey, so I just wanted to uh, comment on what the last caller said about Jesse not like really being into it. Um, I, I agree and I disagree. I just I feel like Jesse is acting more towards, or sorry, uh, Aaron was acting more like Jesse towards the end of it. And I love I love how uh, I'm gonna play the rest of your message, but I love how like he's so synonymous with this character that even when you see him in other things, you like like oh you say Jesse's on Westworld or or oh I just see you see the the Fast and the Furious uh, Need for Speed with Jesse in it. Oh uh, Jesse's awesome on BoJack. I mean, he's Todd, but but Todd is like a you know like a direction Jesse could have gone. But uh, but I love how, I love how you're saying. But and I know what you're gonna say here. But let me play your message. Towards or sorry, uh, Aaron was acting more like Jesse towards the end of Breaking Bad when he was more established and, and incredible in the drug game, as opposed to during that current timeline when they were just noobs and amateurs and and uh... yeah. No, in fairness. There's a lightning in the bottle for young Jesse that it's hard to get. It's like when a band is fresh out the gate and they release their first album and they're so raw and there's this like raw energy. The same energy you see when Aaron Paul runs down on the Price is Right. It's like, yeah, man, I'm on the fucking Price is Right. Like that crazy Aaron Paulness. It's just, it's, it's lightning in the bottle. You can't quite grab that ever again. So I hear what you're saying. He was playing old Jesse as young Jesse. He's done that before. To me, this, this one was even as acceptable as when he played young Jesse in an episode of Breaking Bad towards the end of the run when they did a little, like a little flashback in Breaking Bad. It's hard for him to pull off that young Jesse, uh, but it, it didn't, it didn't throw, it didn't throw me off, but I totally see what some of the callers are saying. It's uh, where he's playing an older version a little bit. And uh, Aaron Paul should have drank five monster drinks. Yes, T, that's, he needs to be a little bit more, but he's a little bit more laid back. He's, he's thinking about, uh, he's thinking about hanging out with Maeve or something. Aaron was playing a character of himself. Exactly. He's trying to be Jesse instead of getting, instead of just actually trying to uh, recreate Jesse instead of just being Jesse. I think maybe he burned that all out during El Camino, which I thought he pulled it off really well playing Jesse of his age, but trying to go back and do that. It's, it's, it is hard. It's, it's, it's not going to be necessarily the easiest thing for a 40-year-old guy to go out and play the young, optimistic Jesse. It's, it's just, you know, there's only so much he could do. I'm very excited to see what the other Jesse scene is. Does this mean we possibly could? Does anyone, and please tell me, call on in, text on in, pop in the chat. Do you guys think there's any chance that the second Jesse scene that we see is Alaska Jesse? That we see Jesse post El Camino? Just wondering what you guys think. 
Holy shit, another Super Chat donation. You guys are amazing as always. These Super Chats are never expected but appreciated more than you know. And yes, it has been landing on Drink a Lot. I do owe one song. We'll get to it in a second. Why did Gene want more money? Thought he had plenty of cash and diamonds. He could be running... He could be running low on money. He could, with everything we hear hear from Francesca and all of that, there's a theoretical situation that he could be somewhat lower on money than we think he is, and he's trying to collect more. But I think right now he's doing it because there's nothing else. It's the only thing. He can't, he can't even comprehend doing anything else. Excuse me. Because it's all he knew, and I think some part of him wants to get caught even if he's not admitting it straight out. When you're stuck in this prison himself, as someone in the live chat said a few minutes ago, the creepy transition between uh, the, the bed the into the him laying in the grave, it's, it's he's in a really messed up position right now. And he needs to... I think he wants to get caught because he, he's, in, he's in a worse prison being stuck as this guy in Cinnabon. Phil, I don't think there would be any need to show Jesse in the post El Camino scene. I don't think so either. Uh, except for to maybe, <laughs> I just thought of like the cheesiest, worst Bill and Ted's bogus journey way. Saul Goodman gets caught and is on the news, and we have uh, we have like like the, uh, the the cold open in the last episode because. The end of the next episode ends with Saul being caught and getting into custody. And then we start episode 13 with Saul, with Jesse watching it from Alaska, like eating his breakfast. We go, fuck. Yeah, bitch. Saul's busted. You know, something stupid like that. But but it, I don't think it's going to be like that. I agree. I think it will be more, another Breaking Bad timeline thing. Yeah, Jesse's about tw 20 years younger. Coming down from meth. Jesse in Alaska, Kim in Florida, split screen conversation. There's still love, there's still love for Jesse. I don't think there I don't think anyone here that's criticizing or has any funny comments about the about Aaron being aging at the the age that everyone should, you know, Aaron being like my age. You know, he looks great. He looks great. But it's funny. It's funny watching him do do that. And it doesn't take away from the scene. For me at all. I think he pulled it off for me personally. But yeah, it is kind of fun watching a 45-year-old play, play a 25-year-old. It's fun. It's fun. I, I don't mind. They did it on 90210. I mean, shit. Andrea Zuckerman was 37 years old in the first season. Dylan was like 70. I mean, come on. Jean must kill Marion before she calls the police. May I think, I, I think we may see his limits in everything he has to deal with. First ever line in the Breaking Bad... Uh, universe hello my name is Walter Hartwell White uh, Jimmy might be telling himself it's about the money he just learned he lost but it's really about Kim not being able to like Gene anymore Gene no longer gives a crap about life he wants to go out like a gangster he still looks very very young so if someone said he looked he looks hot <laughs> I want Kim back you're gonna get Kim back I think if anything tonight's episode confirmed it's that Kim is coming back 100% I mean, I, I thought so anyway, but the fact she's brought up the conversation, the way it got dealt with, the way the bang, 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 just bang, 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 go the trolley, ring, 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 goes the phone booth, like beating the crap out of the phone booth and all that. that it's just there's – if I wasn't 100% sure Kim was coming back before, I know now she is. So uh, let's do this. I got I got another super chat spin of the wheel to do. Let's play this voicemail while I go over and do it. Yeah, Phil, listen. Okay, listen. It's me, the Donald. Okay, listen. You want to hear who, who Gene was talking to in the phone booth? Listen, listen. He was talking to me. Okay, listen. Because Kim was mine. Okay, she was mine. And you know, you know, I don't, I don't like Gene. Okay, because Gene didn't help me through the world. Okay, he's not that great. Okay, he's kind of stupid. You know, it was stupid, okay? <laughs> so, if you ever want to know why I became the president of the United States, greatest country ever, okay? Listen, because Kim, she told me to, okay? Listen, listen. And, 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 but it kind of went south, okay? Listen, but that doesn't matter, okay? Because it was in the future, okay? Listen, listen, listen. stay away from Kim Wexler, dude. And uh, area code 772. <laughs> Oh, 
we get a message from uh, Kim. We get the messages that uh, Saul Goodman's bit was sending Kim Wexler. Uh, holy crap! But uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, our super chat landed on uh, play. Uh, play play a little trumpet. So excuse me for while I destroy this instrument in a bad way. Okay, enough of that. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, okay, so uh, we uh, let's continue here. Area code five four one. Hey there, Phil. The issues guy. Uh, not sure what issues you solve. I don't have. I don't solve any issues. I just continuously have them over and over again and cause issues and problems and insanities and nutsoids. So yeah, that that's the issues. <laughs> uh, but if you could solve this issue real quick for me, uh, this is uh, uh, Nathan Drake calling from Oregon, by the way. Uh, what do you think, uh, uh, Saul? Whatever was screaming obscenities about, huh? And the uh, little bass on, do you think that was at Kim? And he's turned abusive and bald. Most people seem to do that during the show. Anyway, thanks. Thank, Bye. Thank you so much for the... And I think uh, he found some bad information that he didn't want to know about her. And I don't take offense into that. I know I'm better at drums than trumpet. <laughs> uh, I, I appreciate your honesty. It's, it's true. It's definitely true. Uh, so I think that for... Would he have that kind of reaction if she, if he found out she was dead or something bad happened to her? I think he would have more of a sad reaction. I think whatever he heard there, it's either she moved somewhere, there's no contact information, so he finally lost track of her and he can't find her, or she basically hung up on him and was like, he said, hi, this is Jimmy, and, and he, she immediately hung up on him. <laughs> it's basically what I, what I thought. Was, uh, would, uh, that was supposed <laughs> It's all good. It's all good, man. Kim is disbarred. I don't see her representing that. Uh, does that wake up your neighbors with that trumpet? That's why I was honestly I was playing kind of quiet. <laughs> I was trying to play as quiet as humanly possible. So yeah, that, that's why. That's why I hope that one doesn't. I hope it doesn't land on that. So there were a few shots. If uh, soft batch with the super tattoo So there were a few shots. If Gene and Saul with wires in front of them, besides the symbols and the buys. Uh, the symbolism bars it just seems so obvious to me uh being in jail being trapped in that kind of situation oh thank you jackie c i appreciate that i don't agree he was on the phone for a while he was it seemed like he heard a lot of information so what could someone have told him about kim that would have pissed him off that much kim moved oh we don't have any contact information sorry um she hasn't worked here in years um sorry Kim is Kim Wexler. She committed suicide last year. We don't know where she is. You know, we're sorry. Is his family? Is his friends? What would drive him that angry? To me, he might have broken down crying, but maybe, maybe he doesn't have any more tears left, and he finds out that she's something bad happened to her, and he gets extra emotional about it. Rick reviews and reads says, actually, now that I think about it, it is possible Gene found out not only that he couldn't reach Kim, but also that she's engaged, she's married. That could be it too. <laughs> That's a good one. He could find out from her, uh, from, oh, she's on our honeymoon or something like that. That could drive him pissed off, angry in that moment where he's like, I missed my window, I missed my opportunity. That's, That's definitely possible as well. And, uh, oh my goodness, thank you so much, everybody. Very, very excited to have all of you guys joining us tonight. <laughs> a little Phil cameo, a little pop in there. Perhaps Kim will end up with her own Cinnabon franchise. She can hire Gene. That would be awesome. The sprinkler system, is that a front? Do we think the sprinkler system thing is a front? What would be Robert, who with, with a very scary picture of Gus Frigg in there, what would be a way the show could end that we would, that, you would find very disappointing. Um, I think if it ended without a actual conclusion point, if we ended with not knowing what happens with Gene and Gene just continues on with not not actually having a conclusion, I want to. I want the end to be relatively conclusive uh, and give us give us something. So I think the only way they could, not the only way, there's other ways they could disappoint me, but um, 
I think I think that's the biggest way I could be disappointed if we if we get a if we get a uh, a a uh, lead up a big lead up of some sort and we don't get the payoff of any kind if this all ends up being much to do about nothing in some ways I don't want I don't prefer open ending open ended endings for long drama series like this. Sorry, I hear some beeping outside. There's like a truck backing. This is a truck backing up outside. There's a there's a security sprinkler system beeping out back. Kim Wexler is on the on the line. She's finding me right now. Only two episodes. Exactly. Don't stop. They did have was was that the exact Castaway Crossroads? It very well might have been. And we got that super chat. So thank you so much, Robert. Let me play one more voicemail before we get into our, you know what. So here we go. Area code 304. My name is Jacob, and I'm from uh, West Virginia. My question for you is that do you think we're going to see Walt and Jesse again? And what I think is we are 100% seeing them again. So I guess my question more is how do you think we're seeing them again? Mm -hmm. Thanks, and hope you answer my question. Thank you so much for the question. Uh, we will definitely see them again, one scene from each one of them. As for the more important part of that question, how we're going to see them, I have no goddamn clue. I have no goddamn clue. But I do think it's important, as it was important in the last episode in Nippy, how we set up that we could have time frames in any time period, just for exactly this reason, what I, what I was saying last week. Uh, so that they could do this in this episode and bounce back between the Breaking Bad timeline and other timelines. So I think we've established that we can do this. Uh, to me, I've always thought the two scenes that we would see with Walter was the scene we saw tonight uh, because it's important with what he says. To it, it has so much relation to the foundation, even though it it's it's minor, but we have relation to the foundation of Better Call Saul with that scene. And, you know, Lalo sent me Ignacio, like they had to create characters based on what they said in that scene. And the other one was seeing a little bit more between Walter and Saul when they're in the vacuum cleaner salesman's basement before Saul takes off to go to uh, Omaha. Uh, so I feel like it's going to be in that scene, but I could be wrong. It could be something I completely don't know. The Jesse scene, I have no clue. I, uh, when Jesse's in the office, uh, maybe the Walter scene that we'll see is Walter talking to talking to uh, Saul about convincing him to poison Brock. Uh, maybe there's a scene we'll see with Jesse and Saul around that whole situation. I don't know. The, the Jesse one's harder to me. The Walter one, I feel in my mind, is going to be the scene in the vac in the basement of the vacuum cleaner guy. But I, I, again, I could be it could be anywhere. It really could. Uh, they've established that anything's possible, and that's one of the fun things watching this show. And uh, Jesse, Jesse after Jane dies, that could possibly be it. Chris, and great to see Chris in the live chat, uh, who's staying up tonight with us to get up early and uh, can't get enough of this discussion. Uh, Gene and Jeff start cooking meth and die in an explosion. I don't think we'll ever talk. No, Dracarys, but I mean that's the that's the emotional uh, emotional high point of the entire dual series. Gene Gene, the Cinnabon machine. Mean, mean Gene, Cinnabon machine. Did anyone else realize that uh, Walter, uh, that uh, Mandara with Walt, when he was talking to Jesse? <laughs> I love that. Uh, thank you, Jackie C., who's the, one of the most amazing mods in the business. The, po the porn hosts can't get enough of us tonight, which means you guys are sharing this enough. Keep it up. Keep sharing this. Keep liking, commenting, and make sure if you're watching this live, you subscribe so you can join us for the final two weeks of these discussions because this is so much goddamn fun. And you know what else is a lot of fun? It's a lot of fun, you know, talking about all this. And we're going to get, we still have five more voicemails and 13 text messages. We're going to get to all of your questions and comments tonight but you know what time it is it's my favorite time of the night it's time for the recap
It's time for our recap. We're going to take a look at every scene of this episode. Watch it back. Listen to it back. Go through it one more time. Let's get into this. I mean, you're like watching the Wayne's World Weird Al show, so I might as well lean into it, right? <laughs> oh my goodness. Welcome back, everyone. So, it's, yeah, it's the point in the evening. That's how I know the recap's about to start. I'm like, okay, I'm, I'm, bu I'm buzzed enough to get this started. So we're going to go back and look at every scene in this episode, get back into our recap here, and let's do it. <laughs> In the teaser for episode 12, the police scanner says vehicle parking complaint, van blocking the driveway. He seems lost. Okay, so it could just be a much to do about nothing scene where it seems like he might be getting in trouble for some sort, but he doesn't actually do that. <laughs> Jesse looks old. Gene brings the Cinnabon's ki uh, King's, Kim's wedding. Uh, please, please listen to more calls. We will. Uh, don't worry. We're going to listen to all the calls in the evening. Don't worry, we're not going to miss any of these calls. We're just going to get into a little bit of this recap first, and then we'll get back into it. We'll pause a little bit during it, but let's start our episode right. Can you start our episode right? Oh, my goodness. Been unpaused, been unpaused for too long. So let's play one voicemail while we're waiting to, while I get this set up a little bit. It's from area code 706. Phil, this is Jackie again. Um, I can't believe that I forgot to talk about Kim. Like, her, the, the phone call that was muffled, Gene getting pissed off, I'm pretty sure that was Kim he was talking to, and that she was, first of all, like, why are you contacting me? Like, they could be listening in, I'm not your accomplice, blah, blah, blah. Like, you need to turn yourself in, Jimmy. And that's probably what pissed him off, was Kim insisting that he turn himself in. And I think that's why he goes... Yeah, being like, what are you, dumb? Are you dumb? Full on hard and breaks bad. Um, and that's why he, you know, breaks into that guy's house and everything. Like, uh, he kind of is egged on by her almost like to do these scams um yeah at that because he's basically at that point he's like if i lost everything i lost it doesn't even matter anymore i've gone too far so our episode starts off we start with the sound of someone trapped and someone's captured wait wait is, are we oh my goodness Oh, sorry. <laughs> We're in the scene in Breaking Bad with Jimmy trapped in the desert. He's begging to get the doors open. That lot, please don't do it in the desert has a lot more meaning with the, what he dealt with with Mike in the desert. I did not catch the Mandar Easter egg. I, I will get to you. I ended up just picking one of the uh, quick calls early. I'm gonna, I'll get back to your first call in a minute. Absolutely. Uh, all calls will be all calls will be played tonight. I'm thinking the same thing, Patricia. I'm feeling stupid. What is this Mandar thing? I, 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 I miss I'm missing it. Uh, and uh, Jorge, we will uh, we will. I will absolutely be recapping that the, f the next week after this will be on Sunday night right after that episode airs. So I hope you join me over here. Make sure you're subscribed for that, Jorge. We'll definitely be talking about that show, too. So it cuts and we're we're uh, we're breaking bad we're, as Saul's in the back seat, and we're in the scene getting shuffled out to the desert. Really great start. They weren't wasting any time in an episode co called Breaking Bad. No hesitation. Push us right into the Breaking Bad timeline, and it works. Oh, yeah, the little the little stoners. 
Someone call in 781-990-8509 and explain to me the Mandar thing. I'm feeling very stupid or, or I'm not in on the joke or something. Or or I feel like this is all a joke on me or something I missed. As we get our – oh, my goodness. I keep unplugging this. We get our uh, intro for better for better call Saul, and uh, with the blue intro, we don't get a we don't get a Breaking Bad intro, but we do get the blue intro as we come back in on black and white here in a pl the plunger scene with Francesca. Oh, he's the little stoner kid, and we get these little fucking stoners in this scene. What are you putting your Those seeds and stems flesh. in the sink, you assholes? Just throw it in the trash. She gives this dude shit for putting weed and seed stems and seed, seeds and stem down the sinks. She calls these dudes on their weed stuff, and she's just, and they're watching the Jackie Chan adventures on the TV behind them, which is really funny. Uh, Fran sees the time, and she heads off, and she gives these stoners some shit, and uh, and she's the landlord here, and she tells them to go jerk off. And, uh, yeah, who shall not be named is Gus, he was talking about. What does he shall not be named think of? Which which is uh, awesome to hear Saul talk about Gus because we don't hear that too often. It's just a guy that knows a guy that knows a guy. Yeah, she sm smells like skunks and butthole. Narca? Yeah, narca. Feminine version of narco. <gasps> oh, oh, oh. Conjugate much? <laughs> Conjugate much. <laughs> Dude, these guys are giving stoners a bad name. Fuck these dudes. Everything that's cool about Skinny Pete. See, this is why on this show, being a meth addict is cooler than being a stoner. Not in reality, in this show. I'd rather listen to Skinny Pete and Badger. These guys are douchebags. You can do it. It's a simple up and down motion, like you're used to. Oh my goodness! <laughs> because yeah, in this in this world, the meth heads are cooler. I, I want to hang out with Jesse too before these fucking douche nozzles. Like, come on, Dude, fucking douche nozzles. Okay, so we Francesca, she's off. She's watching her back as she drives past the lawyer's pick from Mar like our original lawyer guy. Which was this? Uh, was this a foreshadow that everyone has thought, or I've speculated that he defends himself, that Kim possibly gets her license back in defense. But the, do we see now that we get the shot of the lawyer that he's been talking to since episode one, that dude, uh, the, ball, the ball guy, Oakley, or whatever his name is, that he's a defense attorney now, and we get a line of Francesca telling Gene that he this guy's a defense attorney. Does that mean he's going to eventually be Saul's attorney in the final episode? Because, to parallel the first episode? So yeah, I could I could see that possibly happening because they went out of their way to show us what that guy was doing and that he's a defense attorney now. She said on the phone to Saul wasn't being followed as much. I thought it was a waste of time. There were no yeah no no uh, no badger and skinny feet. <laughs> Jackie, see ya. I'm with you. Kim is going to make an appearance in five. I'm convinced of it home run plays. They were smoking Reggie's for sure. Yeah, they're smoking that dirt. <laughs> Reggie weed for sure. Thank you so much for all of our super chatters tonight. If I've, if I've missed, I think I, I think I owe one drum solo at some point. Otherwise, I think I've been, uh, I, I'm all caught up with all of those. They are. They're stereotypical, but but not good stereotypical stoners. They're, they're like douche, like douchebag stoners. So uh, this can, scene is tense and uncomfortable as she heads off to a sketchy gas station and looks at a clock waiting for the time, waiting for this phone call. Uh, she has that what the fuck and thinking about leaving as the phone just about ends up ringing right when she thinks about leaving. Right when she thinks about leaving. <laughs> At three, the phone, the phone finally rings, and uh, and she goes yeah. and talks to Jimmy. Oh. Let's listen to this whole conversation. You're there, great, great, unencumbered by curious eyes and ears, I'm guessing. Because this is an important conversation, Breaking Bad wise. I I want to hear this again for the first for the second time because when you're taking notes and watching it, you miss a little bit of this. So let's let's go over this. Wouldn't have picked up otherwise. Right. Excellent. Um, okay, well then, 
Lay it on me. First things first. You know, I, I believe we agreed after. First, oh, I forgot about the money. So for, first things first, she needs to go all Andy hey. Dufresne and get her money. Well, let's, uh, let's, I'll, I'll let it pause for a while and do that and take some of your comments. She really hurried to answer that phone. She wants that money. Episode was filled with member, member this, member, we did, but they've, they've held off member berries for a long time. They occasionally put in stuff. So I, you needed to get it done tonight in an episode called Breaking Bad. You needed to get some of those member berries done. Member Skyla, this is what happened to Skyla. Member this guy, remember this happened to you almost needed it in this episode to as that culmination for all that sort of stuff. Oh my goodness, the bots are crazy tonight. So he Andy Dufresne's her some cash, and he he's very he's very nice about it. He's like, is uh, you sure there's no rats in it? And he's he's happy there aren't. My mail gets opened. Oh, my sorry. phone at. Home. I want to go back in a little bit. So, okay. great. So Was he's got the there? money, I and mean, let's listen to their conversation. Anything? It's all here. <sighs> okay. Well, uh... You're sexy. Me. How hot? How hot? Yeah. Well, I still get followed. Not as often as when the ship first hit the fan, but I still see them. My mail gets opened. My phone at home clicks whenever I use it. So the maestro buying the farm, it didn't change anything? No, if anything, it made it worse. Skylar White got her deal, so the only ones left to go after are you and Pinkman, and I heard they found his car down by the border, so adios, dopehead. Oh, so they're still on the way. Okay, whoa, whoa, whoa. I, I want to hear that one more time. Wait. If anything, it made it worse. Chip first hit the fan, but I still see them. My mail gets opened. My phone at home clicks whenever I use it. So the maestro buying the farm, it didn't change anything? No, if anything, it made it, made it worse. Someone asked who Bill Oakley was. Bill Oakley's the lawyer that Saul makes all those deals with in the first season, like his buddy that's it, that was in the district attorney's office, uh, the bald guy that he has all those interactions with at the, uh, at the vending machine. I believe that's who that guy is. Skylar White got her deal, so... Okay, so Skylar White made a deal. Left to go after. Skylar White made a deal. Jesse, they just found his car, and they don't know where the hell he is. Uh, so we're finding out all this little information about where all these characters are, and he's realizing that they are still after him. Are you and Pinkman, and I heard they found his car down by the border, so... The border. Adios, dopehead. Oh, so they're still on the way. Hey, what do you know about the nail salons? Nail salons are gone. What? Everything's gone. gone. All of them? Yep. What about the vending machines? Gone. Jesus! Uh, don't tell me laser tag. Feds found it all. Laser tag's gone too. Ow! It was shells within shells. Damn it. Damn it. Okay. Okay. So the hey. Oh, what if... Let's say there was an overseas account. Um, <laughs> I love how he's playing this like she doesn't know what he's talking about. So basically all of this is showing us that he's just fucked. He's up against a hole. And I think this leads into where he gets a little bit more greedy and decides to work with Jeffy and his crew again. I think deciding to fuck over the guy with cancer is more about the parallel with realizing Walter's. He blames himself for not making the smart decision in the situation, so he wants to pay back a little bit, like kick someone else with cancer down. Except what you took with you, and I'm guessing that wasn't chump change. Yeah, well. Well, I guess that's it. Wait, wait, wait. Come on, I just put more quarters in. Can't you just. <laughs> just talk to know. me. I'm so lonely. And again, this gets a very similar vibe right there to when Walter begs the vacuum cleaner guy to stay and play cards with him. He like pays him extra to, to play cards with him because he just wants to hang out. So this is his only connection that he'll ever have again, essentially, to his other world. So he wants to talk to her and feel like she gives a shit, which she doesn't. He held him under false pretenses or something, so last I heard he walked. Good. Um, how about Danny? Or uh, or Ira. I mean, any word on those two guys? They have internet where you are? 
Oh, just oh come on. Yeah, come on. Something. Don't be so serious. mean. Uh, remember Bill Oakley? Yeah, I don't think he needs the money either uh, right away. I just think it's when you have all those cash stashes everywhere. His instinct will be to go get money. I don't think he actually needs it. He probably has enough on him with that and the diamonds that he could live on that forever. But it's like an excuse. Private Jet is taking us to the palace on Thursday. Yeah. Okay, well, I guess that's it then. Gene is definitely in a hell of sorts. I did get one call. Oh, here it is. After everything went down. Kim. Checking in on me. No kidding. He gets this look in his face. Mm -hmm. Your name came up. Asked if you were alive. She asked about me. What did you tell her? Nothing. But she asked. Yep. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, uh, I guess that gave him like too much this hope. Is goodbye. It's like that high school thing. Like, hey, did did she ask about me at the at the mall? Can I come down and get a soda? He totally gets all heart wrenched. And it's like he's dipped in that pit again. And see, to me, this shows that he's had other interactions with Kim. He's tried to reach out to her before. And at one point they had another falling out where they when they possibly were officially divorced or whatever. And your name came up. It's just an interesting way of saying that. I don't know. And the way he looks, it doesn't seem like he hasn't talked to her since she walked out then. They had to have talked to each other to make the divorce official, at least on some level. As he drives up to the crossroads to, again, learn how to play electric guitar from the devil. And he says, fuck it. And he's in the middle. And he goes to a phone call. And he calls Florida. Again, I want to listen to this one as well, very clearly. Hi, I need a number in Florida. Titus Bill. Palm Coast Sprinklers. Palm Coast Sprinklers. Is this a front? Number one, the way he makes the phone call. Every time he calls on the phone, I think he's going to ask for a new uh, filter for his for his vacuum cleaner. But uh, but so he's, she's working at a sprinkler place. It's on a road. Um, it's named after a fish. Uh, Tarpon Road, right. Well, can you put me through? I'll say again how much? Okay. <sighs> Fucking payphones. I'm having traumatic memories from payphones. You know, everyone goes all nostalgia. Like, I'm sorry, I'm going to do a quick rant. Payphones and Blockbuster, I don't miss both of them. I know some people like want to be all nostalgic about Blockbuster. I don't miss having to pay a fee because I didn't rewind the tape <laughs> or late fees. And I certainly don't miss fucking payphones and long-distance charges. I know everyone likes to be nostalgic about the past and talk about what they miss and blah, blah, blah. I don't miss rotary phones. Those are pains in the ass. You screw up one digit, you have to hang it up and try it again. Like, fuck that. That was horrible. And pay phones were the worst. You're trying to talk to them, you're putting money in. Please, please deposit $3.77 for the first two minutes. Like, what? Long distance charges, shit like that. That wasn't good. That wasn't, it wasn't good. It's not like, hey, I'm so nostalgic for having to pay a fucking arm and a leg in quarters in nickels and dimes and to losing half my fucking uh, pay from every paycheck I had as a kid in a fucking pay phone to try to call people. Fuck that. Looking for Kim Wexler. I believe she works there. I think Gene should definitely call me. I think I think we need we need a call because so we cut for him having asked. You're right. People that said that this lasted a while. It does seem like the scene lasts enough for a little while. He's talking to someone. He's having an extended conversation with somebody, and he's hearing. 
it does look like he's getting it looks like he's arguing he's definitely arguing with somebody i don't think so i'm curious people in the live chat or if you want to call on in what is he hearing right here i asked the big question in the live chat for the night our trivia our trivia question our poll question is he talking to kim or is he talking to somebody else but he gets pissed off he gets so pissed off he smashes up the phone and then he kicks the fucking thing afterwards to just to make sure it's dead Ugh. no and I, I like the idea of going someplace uh, i don't want to trash blockbuster I, I like the i i preferred video corner and there was this place called chet's near where i was uh that i'd go to sometimes that i that i would uh like the smaller mom and pops ones but blockbuster i mean it was cool i've rented a lot of video games i probably rented more video games than any anything and and that was good you could try out a game see if you want to play it i i enjoyed the process of renting of renting video games I, I, i'm but i was always paying late fees and shit when i I'd end up paying like more late fees than the game actually cost by the end it's, it's, it's fucking shit i knew if i knew they were gonna go out of business i would have uh never paid anything uh jackie c misses payphones New episode was the best in the series so far, says Jay Love. Definitely one of my favorites of the season, and I can't wait. This is that second step in this in this new arc that we're going on in these these final four episodes with two left. We're halfway through whatever this final arc is. I love how we're basically our prime timeline now is the Gene timeline and the sequel part of Breaking Bad uh, as we continue forward. So let's continue forward with this episode. This is another one of those episodes that there's some to break down, but there's also a lot of just yada yada stuff that happens in this episode where just it's action. There's a couple of big montages. We off to, we go off to him at work as he's not good. He's just We see the spinning, and it's just spinning him into ins insanity. And he eventually uh, off to a taxi, and Jeffy is in there. Uh, and we get back to uh, Jeffy's house where, where, where we bump into Marion again. You know what the hell to do with it, but... The Look, Gene showed me, you, you go to the box up here, mm -hmm. and then you type in funny cat videos. I mean, that's it, just funny cat videos. <laughs> These funny cat videos just pop up. Look at this one, look, look. I will, I will confirm that in 2010, this is exactly what everyone loved about YouTube. They weren't looking forward to watching long-haired hippie idiots jumping around at, and playing drums at... Uh, at at midnight, East Coast time. They were watching cat videos. Cat eating ice cream, can you believe it? It's like America's Funniest Home Videos, but you get to be the host. <laughs> you didn't <get> me something. <laughs> hey, uh, Jeffy, get some glasses. And get it, Jeffy, come on, nonsense. Jeffy. Yeah. New Jeff is winning me over. I, I know I, I'm starting to get uh, Stockholm syndrome with New Jeff because we, we're getting more with him, and I I like him. I like this dude. He's he's he plays he he fits what they're doing with Jeff really well. And he's so pathetic, and he wants to live up to Saul and be his buddy. And then he's he seems like he's a good son too with his mom. And him and Carol Burnett have some good chemistry together. I'm loving it. I'm loving getting to see Carol Burnett in this context. It's great. La Mon Money Peel says laptop is how he's going to be busted, whether that be she shifts her searches from from uh, cat videos to doing some simple Google searches about Albuquerque and uh, or or just, you know, looks at the FBI most wanted list of people. Maybe G maybe Gene is on that list. I think Marion does. I I've been on the list of people that have said I think Marion is somehow out cons him. Because he's always conned old people. He thinks he thinks seniors love him. So I think a senior, a smarter than him, a more capable than him, a person like Marion that could pull it off uh, reasonably and everything that we know about her that we've seen so far and the fact that Carol Burnett and her, the way she, the, just the way she is, you could believe that she could con Jimmy, especially the way Jimmy's acting in the Gene timeline, overconfident, not being careful, He's opening up the possibility and opening the door for someone like Marion to be like, Jeffrey's a loser. He shouldn't be hanging out with Gene. Someone like Gene wouldn't hang out with Jeffy. He's getting my son back into bad things. And, but the question is, if Gene found out about that, would he do all it he needed to do to stop Marion from busting him? Is he that far that he would kill somebody? Uh, and I'm not saying that's a definite 
situation that might happen, but we've seen that he's in a situation where he'll fuck over people, but Jimmy's never been someone that would shut someone up. Is that fully where he would go with it? Or is he just someone that's going to manipulate and destroy someone's life in a different way? I don't think he's a violent dude, but I don't know. If Marion is threatening his safety, could he threaten Marion? I think he has gone that far to be able to do something like that. Personally, I think the person we're seeing in the last two episodes is as bad of a person as Walter could have gotten if in a different scenario. Like, I think this, this gene could do anything. He doesn't have any humanity left. He could poison a kid. He could, he could go full, like, you know, blow someone up, kill somebody. And I think he's going to keep progressing worse and worse until he's stopped at this point. And I know it's, it's like whatever, but I think right now he's, he's, he's literally now the chimp with the machine gun that shut. That Chuck might be a dick. You might be you might be an asshole, Walter, but you're still right. Gene, uh, Pat Healy would become a household name after Better Call Saul. Gene gives me that Paul Newman vibe from The Color of Money. Mark my words. I don't think so. I just think it, she's feeling left out to throw out there. Oh, you guys are awesome. Keep it coming. Keep the comments coming. Keep the chat going. Push this through. We got six voicemails right now and 17 text messages. Going to get to all of those tonight. Just zipping through this episode recap here because, uh, and then we'll get to the rest of the night with some calls and texts and keep this going because, again, we've already talked about most of this episode. It's just kind of going down what happens in it. <laughs> As, I thought a computer would beat your mom. As we get uh, Jeffrey not liking it, but Jeffrey gets some glasses. Jeffrey's being sketchy, and Jean wants to talk to him alone, and Marion does not like this. She's immediately, they, they hold on a fucking frame of her. Guys, you want to see how long they do this? They fucking, they, I just want to show how long they hang on the scene of Marion when Jeffy and Saul walk off. It's extended. Because she doesn't get this. Why would he want to hang out with my loser son, Jeffy, when I'm here? And they hang on it here. They, they pause in this scene. This is her knowing something. They, don't, they, don't, they didn't just cut. They hung on that scene for a bit, for a reason. And as, uh, as uh, Jeff thinks Saul is upset with him because of some good fellow reasons... But he's not, and he's just saying, we need to amp this up. I got a new plan. I got a new thing to do. And we cut from this scene where he's explaining to him, asking him if he has any barbiturates, and tells him to switch his cab route to an evening hour to, to get this plan. And this plan's a pretty obvious, pretty obvious sort of plan. As we go to this series' is love of karaoke, as we hear the amazing Bob Odenkirk try to sing. But my life, my love, and my lady is a scene. At night, when the bars close down, Brandy walks through a silent town and loves a man who's not around. She can still hear him say, she doesn't say, Brandy, you're a fine girl. What a good wife you can be. But my life, my love, my lady is a scene. <laughs> wow. He is the karaoke king. But wow. he I mean he's no Chuck. He's no Chuck. And we have an I have an inherent dislike and horrible feeling about this character that pops up on the screen right here. This dude and he's Buzz from Home Alone and I knew it. I fucking knew it. Also, I do owe one drum solo from a super chat donation. Let me let me get that over with right now. Uh, let me let me pause this for a second. Loser. Thank you so much for your super chats tonight. I appreciate that for getting me a little drunk and also uh, dealing with my subpar music playing. So here we go for a super chat donation. Appreciate it.
thank you so much everyone for your super chat donations you guys have been incredible tonight it means more than you know never expected but always appreciated okay so here we go let's continue with this particular episode where are we we're in the scene where saul is showing the first of our scams that's okay come on i haven't been right once oh what's the matter with a fella <laughs> Hey, can we get more peanuts? Come on, Victor. You're welcome, Soft Batch. Thank you so much for the super chat donation. I'm pushing it being late right now, but you gotta believe in yourself, little buddy. <clears throat> Thank you so much, FM. One more One more I had to make up for the no, shitty trumpet no solo. More. <laughs> no more lemon wedges on my nose. No more trick coins. No more toothpicks. Didn't Buzz from Home Alone just get arrested for being up his girlfriend? So is this not Buzz from Home Alone? This is an easy. Either way, we're set up in the scam where he's fake drinking. He's uh, slipping his drink. He's got a he's slipping jimmying his drink into a little uh, into a little um, <laughs> whoops into a little uh, bottle he has in his little bottle he has in his uh, stuck to his rib, and he's fake getting drunk and allowing this guy to get shit-faced and then putting him in one of Jeff's cabs and then getting him all uh, high on barbiturates with some water that Jeff is setting up. It's a, it's a real detailed plan here. And then the other guy, Buddy or Dylan, whatever, whoever the other but guy, shows up at the house with the dog as a lookout and robs him. It's, it's a pretty fucking awesome situation, actually. Let's do a little bit more of this. <laughs> Buzz, your girlfriend is bleh. <laughs> it's a fun scene. These two have chemistry. I love when uh, Odenkirk gets to play comedy, and he's they've given him a lot of comedy in these last couple of episodes to do, to bring it back. We got Dracarys, bitch. Thank you so much. If you think this is a happy ending, then you haven't been paying attention. Gene will either end up dead or in prison. I think Kim will visit him. That could very much be a final scene of the series with Kim visiting him in prison. I, I would not go against that. Let me turn this up and play uh, Spin the Wheel. Some night air. Yeah. Well, easy. Looks like one of our cabs is here. Oh, I bet you for it. <laughs> no bets. <laughs> Come on, hear me out. It's simple. Don't be such a pussy, baby. Look. I have to drink it. <laughs> what? The wheel landed on drink. My neighbors thank it for not landing on trumpet. <laughs> That's for damn sure. <laughs> thank you so much for the super chat donators. I'll even pay for it. Are you just going to punch me or something? No, I promise. My hands won't touch your body, and I won't blow it off the back of your hand. Yeah. My body will not touch your body or the matches. <laughs> and I live in a mighty hobbit hole, mighty, mighty healthy. I would love to live a hobbit's life, just smoking, smoking, smoking herbs, <laughs> living in Hobbiton, eating a second breakfast. I'm definitely, I think a hobbit is an accurate way to describe me. Loser! <laughs> I'll see you around next time, pal. Oh, this is fun. Oh, Victor. Buzz, you're such a fucking loser. You can keep the matches. So he brings back his name, Victor, again, too. Fucking large cheese pizza all to myself. So, uh... <laughs> So he's not fit. he's not really drinking. He sets this all up, and then Jeffy gives this guy a little water that's spiked, excuse me, with barbiturates. And I like how so much of this isn't. There's no music during some of this gene scenes until we get into our little scam moment, and then we get into we see what uh we see what the buddy's doing, and he breaks into the house, and he seems to be. He seems to be stealing all of his information that is what they're stealing. They're stealing, uh, taking pictures of all of his, his, um, IDs, his credit cards, both sides of it, taking pictures of the checks, probably selling the identity in different places, either way, whatever they're doing. 
Uh, the music is now in scam as he's uh, checking everything out. Listen to some scam music. Oh, I want a large cheese pizza. Music times. Let's do it. Let's get a pizza. Let's get pizza for the party. I would love to party with all of you, by the way. I would love to I would love to ha sit in a big, uh, like go out to a casino or a big, uh, big bar and get to party with all you guys and have some pizza. Uh, Radio Chaos with the Super Chat donation. You guys, seriously, with these Super Chats are amazing. If he was talking to Kim on the phone, I think she was pissed Jean didn't call her to buy any sprinklers. <laughs> listen, 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 Jimmy. I appreciate you calling here, but if you, this, this isn't about sprinklers, you better get off the fucking phone now, mister. <laughs> great super, great super chat donation. And obviously, if you, uh, if you guys, let me, let me remove this. Remove. Obviously, if you all, uh, <laughs> sorry, I was having to, I was having to remove the, the porn bots. Which are in uh, which are in next next level tonight. Uh, Kim's got a business to run. You know she's a, she's a sprinkler salesman now. If you're not if you're gonna waste my time not ordering sprinklers, I, I don't care. So he's stealing all the information from this guy, and then we go into quickly after this. We go into like a montage of doing it for a bunch of different people. Sorry about that. <laughs> Thank you so much, everybody. Let me see. let me see. The sex bots are going net nuts tonight. It's 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 my hair. They 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 can't get enough of my they can't get enough of my hair. Gene is in the building up his cat, and then will move to Florida and become a lawyer. All these scams are bringing back his old self. He will continue to do senior law. I'd love to see that he comes back eventually. That that we get him back in a normal place, normal normal way a happy way of being jimmy but i don't know as we flash into here we go everybody let's listen to this wheels traveling road show in here what the hell that is this is ship definitely travels oh. i'm sorry you said the what travels crystal ship oh, i call this thing all right never mind just no details Paying him to do a job. Let's just leave it at that. No details. Tell us. Th that money you put in my pocket, that doesn't just extend to this job. That'll get you attorney-client privilege on, on all matters. No details. I mean, look at this setup. I mean, what, you two drive around like Mr. Softy, scooping out drugs for all the good boys and girls? No, I don't deal from here. I said no details. Dude, to stand in front of a meth lab is not like he ain't gonna put two and two together. He is on a need-to-know basis. I don't care. Okay, you you could people could say whatever they want the way Aaron Paul looks. I am so I am a happy 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 fanboy right now, a Breaking Bad fanboy. I got my Jesse and Walt together in a, a meaningful scene again, bickering back and forth. There's something I said this when I reviewed Breaking Bad on this very channel in the final season. Uh, there's something about the comedic timing that these two actors have together. They've progressed through. Through media into reality, and they've per they've continued this bromance in a way that I can only compare in a different show, different vibe altogether. In the way that uh, Donald Faison and Zach Braff have, where they took uh, Turk and JD on Scrubs, and they they became real close friends from that. Aaron Paul and Brian Cranston, it seems like the same thing. They just became such amazing friends. And the chemistry that they have as humans together still passes through on screen together. When they're in moments together, whether, they, whether they're guest appearances, whether in that little skit that they did with uh, Julia Louis-Dreyfus post-Breaking Bad where they all worked at the pawn shop or something, whatever that was. They're so fucking good together. Their timing, their essence, they're bouncing back and forth. They are one of the best duos in anything ever anywhere. And I've wanted wanted an excuse to talk about this again because it's been so long, but we get to see it again. I don't care how old Aaron Paul is. I don't care whatever. Seeing the two of them together and hearing their bounce back and forth dialogue. Let's listen to this instead of watch this. And hearing them go back and forth, it's gold. It's like being... It's it's talking to an old friend you haven't seen in years and you get right back into it. 
and I loved every goddamn second of this. This gave me everything I wanted from a Walt and Jesse scene. And let's listen to more. Show my face. Road show in here. Whatever the hell that is. This the ship definitely travels. I'm sorry, you said the what travels? Crystal Schiff. Well, I call this thing. All right, never mind. Just no details. Paying him to do a job. Let's just leave it at that. No details, fellas. Th that money you put in my pocket, that doesn't just extend to this job. That'll get you attorney-client privilege on, on all matters. No details. I mean, look at this setup. I mean, what, you two drive around like Mr. Softy, scooping out drugs for all the good boys and girls? No, we don't deal from here. I said no details. Dude, standing in front of a meth lab is not like he ain't gonna put two and two together. He is on a need-to-know basis. Oh, I didn't want to show my face. Did he need to know that? So, you're not just distribution. You're the whole freaking package. And that's the thing, like, again, I'm playing this all. The timing that they have, the chemistry that they had, you can say whatever about age and time and, and a little bit of member berries going on in this. I'm okay with all of that. That doesn't take me out of it. What would take me out of it is if the chemistry was off, if the dialogue was off. But the dialogue feels like a conversation the two of them would have. The way Saul fits into it, we feel like we're in that, for me, that dynamic again, those scenes from Breaking Bad. That way that he fit into the mix of them helped oil the gears, helped feed their... He, he says Laurel and Hardy, but it's more it's more like uh, Felix and Oscar. They, they're like the odd couple in some ways. Uh, and it really just works. It really works. I want to see Aaron Paul and Brian Cranston do more together. And it's tough because they're so synonymous with these characters. And it's tough in a lot of situations with a lot of actors. Even if you go back to like the Honeymooners with Jackie Gleason and Art Carney. They did work together again on a big movie later on in life. But they were so synonymous in those characters. They worked so well together. They both could have done other things together because they both had other gears as actors, but they never could because they would always be synonymous for uh, for Norton and Cramden. And I think these two are always, when they're together, synonymous for uh, Jesse and Walt. But they're so they have so much great chemistry. I would love to see them work together more. Uh, but if this is the last time we see them in an, in a real scene that matters together, because the next two scenes of Walt and Jesse, and yes, again, we will see Walt and Jesse again. And it is kind of something I was hoping that it wasn't all going to be in one episode. We're going to see Walt once and Jesse once alone. Maybe something else that they didn't tell us, but what we know for sure is we're going to see another singular scene of each character. If this is the last time we see Aaron Paul and Brian Cranston acting together in a scene that matters, it was fucking worth it, and it really worked. And I was so happy to see these guys doing this again. And let's listen to more of this. This is fucking awesome. <laughs> we're sitting here. We're sitting here in 2022 listening to a scene with Brian Cranston and Aaron Paul playing Jesse Pinkman and, and Walter White. What the fuck is wrong with this? We're in like the dreams, my dream scenario when this series ended. And it's amazing. And it actually, they actually pulled it off because Vince Gilligan and Peter Gould are the goats of television show making. Yeah, I'm hyperbolic, but it's true. You two actually make the blue stuff. Here? <laughs> That's amazing. Can you not touch? I mean, look at this. I had a fish that could have used this as a vacation home, but you're using it to make the goods, huh? Yeah, it's a, it's a uh, round bottom class. Mm -hmm. Right? Round bottom. The flask for distilling. It won't be if you break it. Now, please, put it down. Oh. <clears throat> and again, you people are saying it, especially Walter. Cranston is just, Cranston's like one of the greatest actors that's ever walked the earth. He really is. If you, especially if you think about him playing Hal and Malcolm in the middle and everything he did with this, and then every little bit part he plays and the way he can transform his body, transform his voice, tap back into this. I think he's so good compared to Aaron Paul because Cranston is – Aaron Paul's a great actor. Cranston is a transcendent, amazing talent as an actor, like one of the best. He might not always get all the opportunities and roles to prove that, but having seen him on stage, uh, 
to Teddy Roosevelt thing, having seen him in a lot of other things. Cranston just has something. Even Watley on Seinfeld, like he has this screen charisma, the way he delivers dialogue, the way he snaps into something. He can be menacing and humorous all at the same time. God, I love Brian Cranston, and getting to see him play Walter White again is such a damn treat. I can't wait to see the next scene. Okay, so if you cook the blue stuff, then that means exactly. You're... I don't care if it's rational or not. Can we add a category of cameos, cameo uh, Emmy, so we can give fucking Cranston an Emmy for snapping right fucking back into Walter fucking White? Or in, and that makes you your eyes. Again, Odenkirk kills it in this scene, too. Aaron Paul's good. He serves his role. To me, he doesn't take anything away. But this scene is Cranston in, in, in Odenkirk. I don't want to use this opportunity that I'm glorifying Walter White. I'm glorifying Cranston for his performance. He's bringing his A game here because he's guest appearance, guest appearing on one of the greatest shows of all time, Better Call Saul. That's, it's, that's one of the greatest shows of all time without having this amazing actor that's in this universe with Walter White. Bob Odenkirk has shown himself to also be one of the most amazingly talented people in multi-talented individuals, being able to pull off comedy in the way he does and writing in the way he does, and also this dramatic uh, ang- this dramatic gear he can go into. And then if you look at like nobody, the action gear he can go into too. I'm not sure Cranston could pull that stuff off, but seeing these two gargantuan talents work together, it's just, it's amazing. And the way he fits into that Saul Goodman that we knew in breaking bad in this scene, but because we know all of this information on where Jimmy is at this point in his life and everything he's been through and seeing the parallels of the gene storyline. Now it adds so much more meaning. And this is what they were talking about, about changing the way you look at breaking bad. It changes the way you look at Jimmy McGill hundred percent. Even in this scene where he's acting like Saul from breaking bad, there's more subtext to it. That wasn't there before because you just know that information. And that's why it's important to see these scenes with Walter and Jesse again. Because people can say, oh, it's a cameo, not needed member berries. But it's needed because it shows us that that transition. It shows us how when you look at everything, you're only looking at things from one specific angle. To look at it now, a similar scene that we've seen before with these three characters, to look at it now knowing the history that we have behind everything that's Jimmy McGill, it adds this extra layer to it. And that's why it's important to see these Breaking Bad scenes and to see the way Jimmy really was because he was a two-dimensional character in Breaking Bad. He even They've even said this. And even when they first were sussing out, figuring out a, 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 a spinoff, it was going to be a situational comedy. It's going to be like a 30-minute uh, workplace comedy with everyone in the office at Saul Goodman's because instinctually it was a two-dimension it was a it was a one-dimensional character or two-dimensional. I guess it could be a, I guess it could be a two-dimensional character too. <laughs> let's see. Wait, wait. Don't don't go off there. Okay. Let's uh let's listen to a little bit more of this cuz I'm enjoying it. Hey, tell me how, how much product can you churn out with the setup like right, this? We're done. We're done with the questions. We ask the questions. Do you have a job, one job, and I still don't understand how you're going to pull it off? Listen, when I get all my ducks in a row, I'll give you a PowerPoint down at the office. But until then, just just bring what we talked about, okay? And don't worry, I'm going to make it work. I'm taking the 80000 as a starting point for negotiation. Take it any way you want. That's the price, and uh, <clears throat> I'm calling shotgun. I will drive. That voice. Oh, yeah. Sure. I'll just... That Walter voice just has such gravitas, too. And I love this little scene between uh, between Jesse and Walt here about the driving thing. It's very connected and very true to a Breaking Bad scene. Dan, I guess. Dick. At least you won't be rolling around like the last Christmas ham in the back of the delivery truck. You know, I, I've got bad knees. I think you might have messed up my rotator cuff. You're lucky I'm not charging you for my chiropractor. She's expensive. But she adjusts everything. Damn it. 
gotta give us some gas for I your back. Walter's always taking charge, and this is why it's so true to the Walter character. He's one of those people, he's one of those psychotic people that always, no matter what situation, always has to feel like he's the one in charge. He's the one leading the situation. It's okay to be confident and and uh, help guide people through situations if you're, you know, like a strong-willed individual and, and some people are passive and that's fine too. But Walter's a narcissistic dickbag. And he's always been a narcissistic dickbag. Like from, from go. That's just in his makeup. And, I mean, we're comparing him here to Jimmy and stuff. Jimmy's not a narcissistic dickbag. He's becoming one in the Gene timeline. I think that's a lot what this episode's about, too, the parallels and how this situation is turning him more into someone like Walter and not necessarily breaking bad because that's not the the understanding necessarily. But I think it's about Jimmy, about Saul breaking bad, becoming more like Walter and becoming this 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 horrible person and that being away from Kim, being away from anybody, being away from uh, all life and everything that made him good. And everyone has either died or left him. He's even Francesca at the end. He's trying to get banter with him. He can't get with her. Can't get the banter. No one likes him. <laughs> so he's, he's, he's taking it back. He's taking them all back. Give it the proper amount of gas. I guess that's why we're moving now. It just was idling too long. It'll start. Oh, you should have just let me drive, yo. Look, nothing would be different in this moment except you panicking and flooding the engine. We got the awesome UD reviews in the live chat. Make sure you subscribe to her channel if you haven't already. Great stuff. Awesome people. And uh, check that out if you haven't. Bullshit. Well, as I was enjoying the Laurel and Hardy vibe. But I'm not such a fan of the Bickersons. Now, can you get me back to my office? I, I got to work to do if you want me to make some math. I got to admit, I'm enjoying all the Aaron Paul love. I'm definitely, I want to play drums in a cover band. Uh, Mike looks younger than current day Aaron Paul. I must admit, I'm loving all the uh, the Aaron Paul looks old vibes. It's it's all done in all done in good humor. Cause really, he looks amazing for 45. That's what's humorous about it. No one's ragging on the way Aaron Paul looks. Like for 45 years old, he's great, but seeing him play, try to play 25, it makes him look older. <laughs> so I get it. It's like I was in a play trying to play. I think a like last like in 2019 into 2020, and I'm I'm like Aaron Paul's age, right around that. I was trying to play uh, like a 27 year old in the play, and I'm just like watching myself. I'm like, oh no no, it's bad. I look old. I look old. <laughs> it's 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 like when you're trying to squeeze into like a little kid outfit or something like that, like a like a full grown adult squeezing into a little kid's outfit or something. Because he looks great. Like, Aaron Paul looks great for 45, you know, 45 years old. He looks, it's amazing in real life. But, like, his, you know, 25-year-old Jesse, young, young, innocent, crazy Jesse Pinkman trying to be that person. It's, it's funny. It's funny. And I think people are having a good time with it. So, because his performance is top-notch. You say, can't say anything bad about the performance or the scene itself. So, it's, it's, it's just one of those fun things to kind of just, it's like, it's like the Todd thing, you know. We just need to sit a moment. He's forty two. Okay, he's forty two. Someone I thought some I thought someone in the chat said he's forty five. He's forty two. Sorry, I, I take it back. Sorry, Aaron Paul. I'm not uh I'm not I'm not uh I, I gave you a little bit of too much of an age. Sorry, buddy. Oh, we got Matt Smith in the live chat waiting to uh, start his House of Dragon. I'm looking forward to seeing you on House of Dragon, Matt Smith. Walt knows science is absolutely brilliant. Jimmy knows shortcuts well. And uh, Trish D says, Bob told us we'd see another version of Saul. This was it. Him in desperation mode to fight for himself. Once Francesca gave him that evidence, they he set the plan in motion. Uh, Aaron will be 60 in Jesse's high school years. Let me drive, bitch. We'll get to that in a second. I'm also going to do something right here. Congratulations, Jakaris, bitch. Uh, uh, destroy some uh, porn bots for us. Let's listen to the end of this scene. <clears throat> when it idles too long, the fuel pump overheats, so we just need to let it cool down. <sighs> oh. 
in this awkwardness of this pause right here is perfect. It's very Breaking Bad dark comedy. As we hear the cough. <coughs> And I just love the pregnant pause as Gene looks over, as Saul looks over to him and, and gets the perspective. And again, Saul seems so much more of a three-dimensional character right here than he did in all of Breaking Bad. Who's Lalo? Who? I love that. I love this line. I love hearing Jesse say this. So, who's Lalo? Who? Lalo. I can't explain it, but hearing Jesse say the name Lalo is just, it feels like tasty wrong. It feels naughty. It feels like I'm being naughty hearing this. Like I shouldn't hear it. He's saying, he's saying Lalo. I, I just can't explain how awesome it is. And this is what this show has that I don't think anything has had in ever. Like Frasier couldn't pull this off. I'm just saying like other spinoffs prequel sequel things that were successful the godfather 2 was the closest thing in the way that performed as a sequel prequel thing that's equally as good as the original property but it's really awesome uh, some dude named lalo sent us he seemed pretty freaked out never heard of no lalo on the street it's nobody hey are we gonna try that again because and again, his quick it's nobody shows you everyone that said a lot of times that I don't think the Saul we see on Breaking Bad is is we can't resign everything that we've seen before. I think right in that moment where you see that shift in his head, he goes, it's nobody. We see that he's always dealing with all of this. It's just all on the inside and he's just progressing forward. Are they going to find us? Yeah, Trish, it was so awesome hearing that. Yeah, Cranston's playing 45 in this episode of 66. Killing it! I'm buried in a sandstorm a thousand years from now. Just please. Al Pacino, what are we going to say? She's got a big ass! I do hope we have Al Pacino calling in again, but I know I I know Al Pacino, and I think he has to work in the morning, so he's, he's probably making his video right now. But if Al Pacino's watching, I'm sure he, I'm sure he might call back in. Soft batch, that means you can join us all night. Thank you so much for sticking with me. And again, huge thanks to all of our listeners, all our viewers. If you're watching right now and you haven't already, hit that like button. Hit that like button. Hit the subscribe button if you can. Let me rewind that. And uh, and make sure you keep the chats coming and keep the comments and questions coming. I got eight voicemails and 18 texts we're going to get to as soon as we're done with this recap. Not much left with this episode. We're just going to zip through this here and we'll get get to all your calls and voicemails, all your texts and voicemails before we end tonight. So we're not going anywhere. If you left a voicemail, it will be played tonight. Bravo. I second that. Give you I love you guys in the chat. Do what you can. Jiffy. Lube. Hold on. Better call me. Roast me to next world music time. Let's go. Music time. Let's go. So they finally go off. They drive towards Jiffy Lou as we continue on. Walt and Jesse are back. Breaking Bad. It's amazing. I love this scene. It was perfect. As we go back, he is miserable. As we as we get uh, Saul miserable, Gene getting a package, getting his little foot massager that he had in the Breaking Bad timeline that we're going to see in a moment. Yeah. And then we get into yet another Better Call Saul montage. I've said it before. This show's the king of the montage. Let me turn this down so I don't get a copyright strike for this fucking music. <laughs> oh my goodness you guys in the live chat are cracking me up right now thank you so much let me uh, uh i want to i want to i want to cop i want to copy that copy that you can't have an all-star game without without the two biggest stars that's all i'm saying um so uh 
<laughs> you, you're, you're welcome to keep that love going music uh, time lapse going. I'm not, I'm not arguing with you. Uh, so here we go. We get more of this. We just get more of the same um, Saul doing his scam over and over again, up and down the throughout. And then we eventually get to the guy who is the cancer patient at the end of all this. We see we see Saul sleeping with a bunch of uh, hookers, going to strip clubs, making the donuts as we get into this scene. Yeah. Like the man says, with another yeah, actor, I'm not sure who this guy is, but I recognize him from something. I guess, but I mean, with this financial stuff, it feels like the game I'm is not weird. sure who the he is. The big guys always win. I wish I could disagree with you, Victor. I can't. <laughs> exactly, right. Steve. Are the, are the pirate waters. I believe our straight shooters. Now, the, the folks responsible for uh, Enron. I do music. Made off and his ilk. I can't play it at 1230 at night, but I do. <laughs> I have a real drum set in the other room. Oh, awesome. We got the wonderful, the amazing, my friend, the Vivid Kiwi in the live chat. Everyone say hi to the Kiwi. And if you haven't already, make sure you subscribe to him. Amazing channel, amazing content. Some of the best Better Call Saul stuff on YouTube. The Vivid Kiwi in the live chat. My friend and yours. And what? honestly, a lot of the reason why some of you guys are hearing me right now is because the Kiwi sharing us on Twitter uh, to all of you. So, so many of you, if you haven't and you've found me make sure you subscribe to the kiwi he is absolutely a hundred percent good people <laughs> like a charm what are those for cancer <clears throat> oh <clears throat> sorry and as a survivor myself, it's always weird hearing the word, but I think it's fucking awesome that so much part of this episode is Saul having a uh, a a grudge with people with cancer. I like fuck you, Saul. What did I do to any, what did I do to you, buddy? But yeah, so so as as a cancer survivor myself, like listening to this is is like hilarious. Like I like how this is part of it. It's pretty funny to me that Saul sort of has a hair across his ass because this guy has cancer, so he wants to fuck him over. It's just it's fucking awesome because <laughs> Walter had cancer, and he's like he's like you're not gonna get a little payback. So I read this whole scene one way, and again I might be wrong, but I read it that he initially that he had a problem with it and he was gonna his conscience was coming but eventually I think he was just getting off at the idea of fucking this guy over because it would indirectly be like fucking Walter over great scene uh, is it uh, is it bad well it ain't the good kind come on more drinks this one's on me got two more here please Hey, uh, it's none of my business, but uh, love you, Kiwi. You're the best, man. Drinking. You only go around once. You got that right. So again, I think this scene was. I think this was so amazingly played because they. They play with the audience's expectations and they make it seem like, again, this is how I read it. They made it seem like Gene was feeling bad and he was being like, maybe I should call this off. But no, he was doubling down. He was like, this is going to be even sweeter robbing this guy. Fuck these cancer people. <laughs> they, can, they can get away with anything. I, like, I love it. I love how sick he was. Oh, you want me to bust out some blast beats? It's a little late, Radio Chaos, to bust out some bat blast beats, but I will owe you a big, loud drum solo of some kind when I do this live. Uh, I almost want to. Uh, well, let me see if I can. Let me see if I can pause this for a second. Pause. Pause you. Pause you. Let me. Let me. Let me uh, play myself playing drums, not live, so I don't fuck over the uh, whole situation here. So I don't fuck over. So you, you want me to play here for your super chat donation? Let me play. This is me playing a real drum set for a second, I guess.
Okay, that's enough of that. So yeah, there, there you go. I can't really play. I can't play drums loud. I'm a. I'm more of a hand percussionist than a regular drummer, but I can bash the beat a little bit. So radio, there, there you go. There's a, there's a little, there's a little drums, even though it's not live drums. It's a drum. I'm a drum filler. I gotta, I gotta fill some drums here. Fill some drums. Well, well, come on, play, play, damn you! Why aren't you playing thing? Sorry, I have to. I, I, I went off. The, I went off the video thing. So right now, let's, uh, let's, let's take a, uh, take a quick moment to, uh, to take a quick voicemail. Hey Phil, just had this crazy idea in my head. What's gonna happen in the finale? So if anybody's heard the title of the final episode, I'm not gonna say it, but if you've heard it, you'll know where I'm coming from. What if the next episode, the second to last episode, ends with Gene in a coma? The entire final episode is everyone who's died in the name of the title of the episode come to visit Gene in his coma and he has to reconcile with every single one of them so we would get cameos from everybody. And then you could have living people still alive at his bedside, so like Kim, whatever. But the final person he has to deal with in the final scene of Better Call Saul is Chuck. And they have to reconcile, and then they do, and Gene dies, and goes off into the title of the episode with his brother Chuck, and that's how they end. I don't think that's going to be the end. That's a very Bojackian ending. As a huge Bojack Horseman fan, uh, that's a very Bojack-like ending, and I like it. I don't think that's the direction we're going. I'm going to put out a video. Obviously, it's been put out. It's probably – I think I'll do a video on it, but the information is out there. Maybe I won't because it's already pretty – you can find it pretty quickly. It's not like the last one with the Breaking Bad title, uh, which I happen to be in the right place at the right time with the timing of it. Uh, but – uh, the final two episode titles are out. I'm not going to talk about that here. Maybe I'll talk about it in a separate video. Uh, but I don't think they're going to go exactly in that direction. But it is interesting what those titles are. And I don't want to go too far down that road. But good, good call, my friend. Please do some impressions. The guy with cancer is played by Kevin Sussman, who is the guy Sean Gizmo. Poor call. Oh, the Webistic scam in The Sopranos. The absolute fucking loot. Thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> Kiwi, I'm losing my shit here. Uh, let's let's continue with this. Uh, we only got a little bit left in this episode, and then we'll get to your voicemails and your texts. Keep the questions and comments coming. I'm on here for a while. As long as we get texts and voicemails and super chats, I'll be on here for a lot longer. And uh, keep keep the questions and the comments coming. We only got two more after this, so I want to make these parties last as long as possible that we can party and enjoy the episode. Thank you to Kiwi popping in here too, saying hi to us and joining in in the chat discussion. Uh, like I said, make sure you check out his video breakdown of the episode and his channel, giving you some of the best Better Call Saul, call Saul, the Better Call Saul coverage out there. I tried to say it's a fucking tongue twister. Okay, I guess nothing's happening. <laughs> nothing's happening here. As Gene watches it all go, the guy go off. And again, you think that maybe he's going to try to stop the scam. I love how they played that because I thought he was going to try to stop the scam the whole time. And he gets a beep or he gets a call. Cast some light into my cold... Oh, yeah, we get this scene. I almost forgot about this scene. Probably the best member Barry scene we've gotten so far that has the most meaning. We see that Mike warned... Saul about Walter to stay away from him and we kind of already knew this was a thing when they connected to it but I liked seeing this Dark world. let's listen to this scene Let me pass hello it. you're on the clock right so give with the info anytime when you're done well, I can multitask please I'm not gonna talk to you while you're on whatever I, I know this is a troll message but I gotta hear this what does it say Put your dick away, Walter. <laughs> no, it wasn't a troll. Put your dick away, Walter. Dude, greatest voicemail ever. Put your dick away, Walter. <laughs> that is. You know, LBJ used to have his underlings give him reports while he was on the shitter. Okay, I'm going to pause this just for one second to get over to our good buddy and amazing. Oh, my goodness. The one and only, the incredible, 
the awesome Fernandez mother freaking T. Do you watch any of the new Star Trek stuff? Sorry, off topic. I have watched them. I'm not a big fan. I haven't watched um, Strange New Worlds yet. I do like the uh, the animated one, Short Tracks or whatever that is, uh, Lower Decks. I think that's kind of fun. Uh, I'm not a big fan of Discovery, and I'm not a f- big fan of the first two seasons of Picard. Uh, it's it pr- Both are pretty disappointing. Strange New Words, uh, Worlds, I heard is good. Uh, I haven't checked it out yet. I do like the Orville. I think uh, the Orville has been very good uh, for all three seasons. So not off topic. Super chat. You deserve it. Fernandez, toast to you, my friend. Mm-mm. But the new Trek kind of sucks. Orville all the way. Okay, so uh, let's continue here with uh, the mic in now. I'm going to leave or I'm going to put my foot in your skull. Fine. You should try one of these. You walk like Frankenstein after he was probed by aliens. (laughs) I can get you one. Yes, finally some closure on the fish. I got to say... One of my favorite little things to come out of some of the pre-discussions for this episode when this picture, uh, Swimmy McGill, <laughs> this fish. There's a lot of funny one-liners for that. Chuck McFinn, uh, Gus Fish, Gus Fring. There's a lot of really good ones. It would do wonders for your chi. Let's go. Lay it on me. All right, first, there's your Mrs. Denise Gabler. She's cheating, all right. Okay, we don't need to hear about I want to get to the important part. Talon will keep his mouth shut. You can trust him. I say he's worth keeping an eye on. High school chemistry teacher. Here we go. You're shitting me, really? Walter Hartwell White, chemistry teacher over at J.P. Wynn, working with a former student, current meth head, one Jesse Pinkman. Yeah, I definitely made a bong in high school out of something that looks very similar to this. Uh, what else about the teacher? He has lung cancer. Jesus. Ugh. That's why he can't quit with the coughing. How bad? Stage 3A, he's in treatment, more tests to come, but it doesn't look good. Now listen, even if this guy was gonna live, I wouldn't go near him. He's a complete amateur. Well... You see an amateur, I see 170 pounds of clay ready to be molded. Well, if the cancer doesn't get him, it'll be the cops or a bullet to the head. Is that your appraisal? This is a great Mike scene, and getting to see more of the development of these two characters that have been so much of the identity of Better Call Saul since the beginning of the show. We've gotten never too much, just enough, always wanting more. Playing in rock bands, you always want to leave the crowd wanting a little bit more. You always want to do that. And I feel like they've done that with Mike in Gus. I feel like Jonathan Banks and Bob Odenkirk have excellent chemistry together. I think that's one of the best things about some of the casting and the main characters of this series. Jesse, uh, Brian Cranston, Brian Cranston and Aaron Paul, I went on, I waxed poetically about their chemistry. But Jonathan Banks and... And uh, Bob Odenkirk have amazing sort of odd couple like vibes too. And all the moments throughout the entire series culminating with that big desert episode in season five, was it? Not four, season five, right? Uh, Kiwi can correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, Season five, it really just... It was so amazing seeing the two of them work together. And this was, if this is the last scene we see with the two of them, incredible. And I'm glad we got it. And I'm glad we got to see Mike again. I can live without seeing Saul uh, Gus again because he came later on the show. But from season one, this show has been, yes, Jimmy's show, but also Mike's. So it's good to see this kind of goodbye to Mike, too, in this scene. And let's listen to more of it. Or is that what he who shall not be named says about him? He didn't say anything. The guy's small potatoes. Yeah, okay. I hear you. I just... I got a feeling about this. This Heisenberg guy's got something. It's top-of-the-line product. That's the buzz. Yeah, he's got trouble, Jimmy. Stay the fuck away. 
listen to Mike. Rule one of the game, listen to Mike Airman Trout. Rule number two, see rule number one. Listen to Mike Airman Trout. Play. On the street, and I just think with the right management. You know, years ago, I bought a Betamax. Good product, top of the line. Experts said it was better than a VHS. Turned out to be a complete waste of time and money. Hmm? Let it go. Let it go. Let it go. Jimmy, you gotta let it go. This chemistry teacher will bring you down. You gotta let it go. Sorry, that was horrible. Guy with that mustache probably doesn't make a lot of good life choices. <laughs> so, yeah, uh, the second story guy. Uh, thank you, Kiwi. No, thank you, Kiwi, story. who is probably one of the best fact checkers in the business. Thank you for uh, fact checking that for me, Kiwi. All right, part of a high end crew fencing jewelry up into Canada. An Alaska kid caught a bad break. Cop was driving by just as he was ducking in a window. He did the time. No one else on his crew went down. Solid. So it cuts back to that. And again, great scene with Mike. I, I almost, as much as I like the Jesse and Walt situation, I almost like this Mike scene even better. It really adds to it. It adds to that breaking badness of this episode and warning him off about it. I love having times in this particular time timeline. Um, it's something I think a lot of people have wanted. It's something we were talking about last week, the speculation that this could happen here in this particular episode, and we get it, and it's awesome, and it was done tactfully and appropriate to kind of build the arc around, again, I'm not kidding about recording a song, another brick in the saw. It's just, it keeps building up and building up. And seeing this parallel, seeing the parallels between uh, the flashbacks that we're seeing between the Breaking Bad timeline and the Gene timeline moving the story forward really makes what we're watching now feel more like a Breaking Bad sequel than anything else. And that's what's awesome. This show ended in, what is it, uh, 608 or 609 was kind of our season series Better Call Saul finale. And we're moving forward with now our pre now our sequel series, uh, Mean Gene in the Cinnabon Machine, whatever I mean, whatever you want to fucking call it. But now we're in that universe and finishing off that storyline. And yes, there will be some crossover because we will get more Kim. I'm, I will guarantee without a shadow of a doubt we'll see fucking Kim again. We got another super chat donation from the amazing Hans. I'm sure. He, I'm sure you noticed the wobbly cam on the Breaking Bad scenes. Absolutely. Even the film stock, I don't know if they digitally enhanced that. I can't wait to listen to the Insiders podcast. They made it look like Breaking Bad too. Uh, excellently done. Exceptional attention to detail, which is what this creative team is known for. Did they get every little thing? No. Yet Sometimes uh, even, even coordinators, like continuity coordinators can mess up something here and there, but they are some of the most invested and best in the business doing it. So thank you so much for that super chat, Hans. It's getting late for musical instruments, so let me toast to you. Mm -mm -mm. Uh, let's continue here. We're almost at the end of our episode as we see Gene having a drink and he gets a phone call that something's getting fucked up in his plan. But pancreatic cancer. So a guy with cancer can't be an asshole? Huh. Believe me, I speak from experience. I can't. And again, I'm not belaboring a point. I'm an asshole. I was sick at one point. I had it at one point. Assholes can get. It. Did it make me a better person? No, it made me a worse person. Actually, I acted more like an asshole when I was going through it. So no, I agree with what Saul's saying here in theory. But he's talking about Walter. He's not talking about this guy. This guy's a good guy. Like, come on, dude, give me a break. Rip off a guy with cancer. I'm sorry. Do you know how many of the suckers we've ripped off have sob stories? Every single one of them. Yeah, I got ripped off. I tried to buy concert tickets when I was sick and someone ripped me off. They didn't care. Besides, it'll be months before they even realize they've been taken. This guy will already be dead. So please get back in your truck, go back to the house and finish the job. 
No, man. No, dude. No, that. dude. Dude. I can't. All right. <laughs> I get it. You get over it. Okay. I'll applaud this actor, bit part actor. His his dialogue, his the way he's playing this with Bob Odenkirk. No, dude. Come on. Is very real. Uh, and I enjoy this character. He's he he. What could have just been a background nobody character is giving me kind of like a good scene here with uh, Bob and really bringing a lot out of this acting performance as Bob's trying to sell it. He's desperate to sell it, which is coming off as really kind of pathetic. And it's but it's fun to watch. Please believe me before you know it. Have a good night, Kiwi. Thank you so much for popping in as always, buddy. And talk to you soon, my friend. Forget all about it. Go. Oh, look, yeah, we're just doing really do it. Well, right? Hear me out, okay? Just do we're it. We're rolling in cash. We could just let this one go. Not your call. And <sighs> and that's the Walter in him too. No, we got to do this fucking my way. Not your way, my way. And even if we wanted to, Jeff. Jeff, come on, man. Back me up here. Huh? Oh well, I don't know. I mean, I can. Well, well, well sides, I don't know. Well, don't well, I don't know, buddy. Um. Um, it was surgery for me. I don't want to talk too much about this, but I had it in 2015. Um, they did surgery. They were able to get it all. Blah, 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 blah. So 2015. Kidney. Renal cell casanova, dude. I don't know why I said it like that. We're really going to go back there? What did I just say? Jeff, are you in or out? Jeffy, you in or you out? And Jeffy's in. Jeffy wants this. Jeffy wants friends. Jeffy wants to be a part of things. Jeffy believed in him. And this is for the, again, for the first time again, I'm feeling new Jeffy as he's getting ready to drop Saul off here. I mean, this is the end of our episode. He's dropping him off at the house. What time did the guy take the drugs? We give it to him, what, three hours ago? I don't even know if he finished it. He might be awake by an hour. Don't worry about it. Jeffy's making some good points. He said, don't worry about it. It'll be fine. Um, we're, uh, in like two seconds, we're going to start the voicemails. Did it happen again? I got 10 voicemails right now. Voicemail line's still open, so keep them coming. This is our end of our episode. Like, there's not much else to talk about. He drops him off, and our episode ends right as he gets out of the car. And it's kind of a cliffhanger kind of ending that is really like, I was like, what the fuck? You're ending me, you're ending me here? It's, it's, it's a very sort of difficult place where it ends. And that's the end of our episode leading into as he breaks into this house. Uh, will he be caught? Will this lead into him being captured in episode 11? I tend to think that's the direction that they're going, but who fucking knows? Uh, they set up the preview for next week that has the police cars coming. But again, this could be complete, like just them getting there because a car is parked in the wrong place or someone said that they listened to what the police radio scanner said. Could be anything. And that's the end of our episode. But let's get to our voicemails. We have 10 voicemails, uh, 11 voicemails. Keep them coming in. Uh, we're, voicemail line is still open. I'm not in any mood to end this anytime soon. So let's, uh, let's start with our, I think, the oldest one that we have at this point uh, for our first message from Jackie. This is area code 706. Hey, Phil, it's Jackie, uh, a.k.a. Dracarys. Dracarys, bitch. Yo. Um, oh my god, I freaked out when I saw my boys back on screen. Walt and Jesse saw together in the crystal ship, my god, and Walt was trying to take control of the situation, but Saul was like, you know, hey, you guys got something here, um, and damn, Saul should have freaking listened to Mike, because he got this ball rolling. Walt would have never risen to the levels that he did without Saul. Let's put that clear. And Saul basically dug his own grave by betting him. Absolutely. I'm going to play the rest of your message, but I think you bring a good point to something that a question that a previous caller had 
of what was the point. It's that Saul was so much adding some gasoline to the fire that was Walt. He added to him. He legitimized him. He helped put him on steroids to a certain extent and get him involved with the wrong people that helped build, progress him through the system in a sense. So he does have so much agency and responsibility for what happened with Walter White. And that's one of the reasons that these cameos were important and this crossover to this timeline is important because we learn how much Jimmy is actually responsible himself for his position that he's in. Himself with Walt. And I love that transition. Is that foreshadowing that Gene is going to die? Hans, I definitely think they definitely want us to think he's going to die or in jail. Like they give, definitely give us a lot of, as as the caller said, as Dracar's bitch said here, uh, that he's going to be in jail too. Uh, could it be something else, something that we aren't even considering? I don't know. Dead or jail, it's like that Tony Soprano ending. He can only end one of two ways, but he ended up ending in Don't Stop Believing." I know Tony has taught Tony Soprano. Tony Soprano, Tony, my my good buddy and partner in crime, Tony Tony Teflon has speculated that he thinks this is going to end on some sort of cliff, not cliffhanger, but a Sopranos like ending. I disagree. I think we're going to end with a very conclusive ending, but it could be something that we haven't even thought of yet. Um, when he's in the grave, um, that casual mention of who's Lalo and and falls just like uh. uh Nobody. <laughs> oh my god. And um I love the Francesca call. Lots of info dump on there. Super um, info dump. Just love this episode. I think Marion is gonna browse the internet and find out who Jean really is and she's gonna be the one to turn him in. That computer buy is gonna be a bite in the butt for him. I think that's what's gonna happen. Um, and pretty sure a cancer guy is gonna die. Um, and Gene is gonna fully break bad. He fully broke broke bad, acting like Heisenberg this episode, treating Buddy like that. Anyway, um, love this episode. Love you. Love the moth. Shout out to Jackie C. Hey girl. Hey. Anyway, love you guys. Take care. Bye. Great call, Dr. Great call as always, and thank you so much. We got a uh, tweet from our buddy Halicon. It says, Yo, damn, what another episode. Francesca pay phone location at the same spot in Breaking Bad where Jesse convinced the cashier to take the meth and also where Hank questions her and retrieves the ATM camera footage on the RV. Thank you so much for that little piece of information. I love all these little touches to this universe. Here's another voicemail from 870. I liked this episode. I really liked it. I thought it was a great episode. I love the way they continue things after, um, you know, the last episode. Um, um, I love the little details we saw about his assistant in the beginning. I love hearing. I love hearing about Kim. I love the anything we heard about Kim. Um, yeah, I just want to think about that scene when he kicked the phone booth. Maybe that was somebody else. Yeah, I, so you think it was somebody else that would he was talking to? It wasn't Kim necessarily he was talking to. We're gonna get to the poll. We got we got the poll up right now. It seems pretty even if I look at it. We got oh my goodness, twelve hundred votes on that poll right now. If you haven't got your vote in, was he talking to Kim? Was he talking to somebody else? I tend to think he was talking to somebody else. But let me know if you think differently and if you're watching this later definitely jump in the comment section here's area code 778 Our callers are some of the best in the business. Area code 778. That was awesome. Pete's Live Music, our good buddy, who uh, sent me a couple of really awesome text messages. I mean, emails this week, too, that I haven't been able to reply to. But Pete's Live Music, this is like good old days, isn't it? Uh, let's play this message. Hey, Phil. Love what you're doing. Doing a great job. Awesome, awesome show. I'm wondering, uh, somebody's face has to be the last face seen in the last moments of the last episode. 
and I'm wondering whose face that's going to be. I think Saul Goodman's face. I mean, I think this series ends on a shot of Jimmy in some way, shape, or form. I don't think he dies, even though we got a lot of symbolism of of him dying. I think jail is the more obvious answer. Um, but maybe he dies on the run alone and dies, and we get sort of a Godfather kind of ending where we just see him sort of sitting somewhere having to deal with the weight of everything he's been through. I think that's definitely a possibility, but I do think we end on Saul Goodman. Jeez. Uh, this one, we got a little uh, bad audio there from Eric 774. Uh, oh my good, we got Scamala Bader. It was uh, Kim and Yay. I'm catching you live after episode 11. I love when some people that don't always get to catch me live get to pop on in here this is what's so amazing of getting to do this show and getting to talk to all of you amazing folks uh so many names and folks we've talked to and dealt with over the years some of you all the way back since breaking bad ended so it's really awesome to talk to you and thank you so much and if you haven't and you're watching this please hit the subscribe button i know almost like 90% of you aren't subscribed. So if you can, definitely fucking subscribe right now because I'd love for you guys to join me on other shows in the future. We might not all be here together again on another show, but I might talk about a show that you're interested in and be able to do it. We got another super chat from the amazing Fernandez T. Third option, what show? <laughs> I just love Phil. Thank you, Fernandez you don't have to watch Better Call Saul. I also appreciate people just checking this out for my goofiness. You're the best, buddy. Toast to you. I got to hesitate the wheel on Super Chats now because it's one in the morning in my time area and I can't really play. It might be tougher to play drums loud with people sleeping downstairs that have to work at six in the morning. But, you know, I'll be somewhat respectful, but I do owe you guys some drum solos. Toast it up. Mm-mm-mm. Thank you, Fernandez T. These super chats mean more than you know, my friend. Exactly, Cinnabon Manager. Better sub Phil. <laughs> Stay connected. Again, we're not going anywhere right now. I'm still on for a while. Keep the voicemails coming. 781-990-8509. What are your thoughts on this episode? Did you like the cameo with Walter and Jesse? Did it do it for you? Text on in. Call on in. 781-990-8509. Let's play this voicemail and let's get to some of our text messages. We've got 18 text messages waiting for us. i got to get to some of these. Hi, Phil. This is Domino. Just let you know we have an order of 600 large change paint signs uh, oh. right outside your door. I want them. Nick Cage, by the way. Yeah. Enjoy the pizza. Thank you so much for that pizza. I really appreciate it. You stoner motherfucker. That was incredible. Pick up 774. You stoner motherfucker. Give me that pizza. Domino's delivers. I like that garlic, uh, garlic, garlic stuff. Saeed says the episode was horrible. We appreciate everyone in this live chat as much as we might have loved this episode. Some of the ones that are watching it, we're never in echo chamber, Saeed. So if you want to call on in, 781-990-8509 or text that number. Again, 781-990-8509. Let us know what you didn't like about this episode. I'm sure everyone will love to hear that. Um, I would. I know I would. My, my, I know I would myself. I know I would love to hear that. Better call me. I'm drunk. Bring it in. Bring the discussion. We got two more episodes after this. This is the, we got three more or we're still in the midst of it tonight. And then two more parties. Let's party this up. Vince and Peter better do another series together, whether it's in the Breaking Bad, Better Call Saul universe or not. I hope we all, we're all here again doing another Peter and Vince show. But if we're not, we're going to enjoy the hell out of these next three, uh, tonight in the next two weeks. Let's have some fun, everybody. Thank you so much. We got a super chat, no question, just an amazing super chat from Michael. That means more than you know, Michael. Toast to you, my friend. Uh -uh -uh. Uh, I love you, my uh, scam Ula Bader. 
Can I just, I'm just gonna call you SB for now. Okay, so uh, let's go to area code 616. Hi, uh, this is Sean from uh, Grand Rapids, Michigan. Love you, Sean. Calling. I just uh, wanted to leave, uh, just uh, brand new to, the, to your podcast. Thank really, you. Really, really enjoying what I'm seeing so far. Um, Thank you so much for joining. I hope you stick around. Make sure you subscribe. Get that. Uh, get that notification bell, and hopefully, I'll talk about some shows that you watch as well as Better Call Saul in the future. I just uh, but, uh, love the uh, tonight's episode as I normally do. Um, one thing really caught my attention was at the end when uh, Gene breaks the window. Yep. Or um, in to gain access to the door. Right there, that struck me as uh, quite out of character and really stupid for you know Jimmy Saul. And he's always been kind of a crafty, you know, a criminal of subtle detail. And to me, it's, that just reeked of you know kind of desperation. Absolutely, and I'm going to play the rest of your message too. But I think it's one of a great example of how if someone keeps getting away with crimes, can get away from manipulations, you or it happens a lot with cheaters too. You, it happened with Don Draper on uh, Mad Men, where he wasn't just cheating with random people. He started Lotus. He started cheating with the woman that lived in the building. I mean, it is Linda Cardini. I, I can't blame him for that. I have a crush on her. But no, but he, but he was in that situation. Uh, and I think it just shows the progression of how he's in a situation now where he's like, I can just do anything. Lotus, leave it. You have a cut on your nose. Don't mess with it. So, sorry, I'm, I'm talking to my dog. Yeah, go lie down. Do it. So let's play the rest of your message. Sorry about that. You know, I'm getting becoming this sort of muscular, strong arm criminal. Now, I, I, I don't know. That, that definitely seemed like a character shifting. Breezy, get over here. I'll pass it right to you, my friend. Moment to me. And I don't know. Certainly. You know it, T. Certainly seems like he's more likely to get caught um, behaving in the kind of manner he did. And yes. Do you, what do you guys think? Do you think he wants to get caught? I'm curious, some of you guys in the chat, call on in, let me know. Is he doing this not because even consciously, does he subconsciously want to be caught at this point? Seems, you know, completely unnecessary. You know, like his friend said, they were having enough success. He didn't really need to do that to get this one score. But right, enjoying the, the podcast. Have a great night. Bye. Thank you, my friend. You are awesome. Uh, Lady Stoneheart, Kimmy G, the amazing Lady, Lady Stoneheart. Great episode tonight. Gene's Breaking Bad. I'm here for his greens, but he's going to bring it down. I think so. Better Thrill Phil. Oh, the other forever. I love it. I fucking love your voicemails. Oh, what's this say? Uh, I'm going to play this again. I played this already, but it's amazing. Put your dick away, Walter. <laughs> Right now, that's the voicemail of the night. That wins the uh, issues voicemail of the night so far is... Put your dick away, Walter. <laughs> that's, the, that's the winner right now. Here we go. Here we go. 774 again. Hi, Phil. It's Paul McCartney. Yes, I heard you drumming on the live stream. Oh, thank you. I just you, wanted Paul. to say you're quite better than Ringo. Yes. Oh, thank you, Paul. You're so sweet to me. Yes. We actually never even used him in the studio. We could have used someone like you, Phil. <laughs> Sergeant Phil. And by the way, you are quite better than Pete Peppers. Pete Peppers is so boring. Thanks, Phil. And by the way, I want you on my new album. I'll see you in Massachusetts. Thank you, my friend. I will definitely be on your album. I will play drums, trumpet, or conga on anybody's album. Just give me a give me a text message or a uh, or a email at igetissuesman at gmail .com. I'm glad to play make guest appearances on your records. So let's get to some of our text messages. Area code three four seven says Jimmy will find out about Lalo through Gus. I think they made a point of bringing up his name in the RV, and the scene with Mike indicates that Saul. Uh, still hasn't met Gus. Maybe it's worth, uh, maybe it's working towards some kind of confrontation with them. Definitely possibility. I don't think we've necessarily heard the end of the Glalo situation. 
Erico909. We've got a bunch of messages from 909. Let me let me catch up to them right now. Last one for me. Oh, no, that's before. Thought it was cool that Jeff slipped the same way. Oh, no, that's the last message. Sorry. Uh, did you see Anthony Hopkins' word about Krantz? Yes, I did. It was amazing how he loved that. That's why I thought the big actor was going to be Anthony Hopkins. Oscar, what was Francesca doing at the beginning of the episode? She's a slumlord. That's what she was doing. When Jesse said, who was Lalo? I was like, he's keeping the lab warm for you. <laughs> That's funny. Uh, he would eventually definitely hang out with Lalo without realizing it. The cancer center guy was Stuart, the comic book guy from Big Bang Theory. Last thing I thought. We would see Saul got the laser tag place, but it looks like that's not happening. Please talk about the AMC Plus Apple TV glitch. I thought I was the only one that couldn't watch the episode. People, did did anyone not be able to watch the episode for an hour? Did anyone else have to deal with that? With the AMC Plus Apple TV glitch? It's fucked up. <laughs> Shit has been messed up. Here we go, 313. What year is tonight's episode uh, the Breaking Bad thing is season two of Breaking Bad. Is that what it was? Season two? Uh, can't believe Marion gets arrested for watching cat porn. You got to watch out for that Carol Burnett. She's a shady individual. I think the cops are pulling up behind Jeff as he's randomly parked waiting to get back to Gene. That's certainly a possibility. Let's play a voicemail for one second to give me a uh, quick break here for a moment. Uh, let's do this one. Five, five, three, oh. Hua, big one, little one, nipples, staring right at you. <laughs> so we got some nipples staring right at us. <laughs> hey, Phil, Romeo from Brooklyn. Uh, another great episode. A couple of parts of the episode that I liked. Well, first, that graveyard shot uh, right into Gene laying in the bed. That was awesome. Uh, the irony of Mike saying how Walter will end up, that was great. The, the car shots, uh, Gene getting out the car, running to Saul, slamming the door, shots. But uh, my question for you, uh, do Walt and Saul both make each other worse human beings? You know, what, what Kim was trying to avoid with Jimmy by breaking up, does Saul end up doing anyways with Walter? Yes, I think what we found out in this episode is that Walter was a fire that Jimmy added gasoline to. And I think both of them, Walt is the worst possible situation for someone like Jimmy to bump into. He's somebody that's going to take advantage of every avenue that Jimmy can push and push it too far and also bring him down. Walter has a little bit of that Joker in him that Michael Caine describes in The Dark Knight. Some people want to watch it all burn down. Walter doesn't care. Walter's one of those people that has nothing to lose, so he's extra dangerous. So 100%. I would say even more so, I think Jimmy makes Walter a better criminal, and helps him have some perspective, but Walter leads Jimmy to destruction. Area code three four seven. Okay, hi, this is Alex. I sent a voicemail before, but it was kind of a joke. But I have a real one, and it's about Lalo. Uh, okay, let's play your joke message first. Uh, hi. My name is uh, Alex. I'm from uh, somewhere. Um, I'm from I, somewhere. I wanted to. Ask... <laughs> I'm from somewhere. I'm from. I'm from parts unknown. Ask what you thought about Chuck McGill uh, surviving. Um, I've been seeing this theory popping up on you know forums, message boards that there's a chance that Chuck McGill might come back and actually save um, Saul or, or Gene um, in the black and white. Uh, okay, okay. I know this is a joke message. Chuck's dead. <laughs> There's going to be no chicanery here, my friend. Okay, hi. This is Alex. I sent a voicemail before, but it was kind of a joke. But I have a real one, and it's about Lalo. 
um, they they brought up, you know, with, with Jesse talking about Lalo. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm so fucking high. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They, they brought up Lalo. Again. I mean, I feel like they wouldn't have done that. If it <laughs> you know, like, I'm expecting some kind of, like, resolution with, with Jesse talking about Lalo. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm so fucking high. You have no idea about Lalo. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm so fucking high. You have no idea. But they they brought up Lalo again, is what I'm saying. And I feel like they wouldn't have done that if it won't go somewhere. You know, like, I'm expecting some kind of, like, resolution to that because, you know, he, he kind of died very abruptly. And I feel like they have to, at the very least, give some kind of mention to him or wrap things up, so to speak. Um, yeah, that's all I got to say. Sorry, I'm really high. Um, <laughs> he yeah, said it really again. Like he and said it again. It. Oh my good cheers to you. That was that you might you might have just taken over for best voicemail of the night. That was incredible. I gotta I gotta toast a drink. I'm I'm very drunk, but I gotta toast a drink to you. You're amazing. I'm sorry, K Wild. It was funny to me. It was funny to me. He sounded high as fuck. He really did. Sorry, that was hilarious to me. I'm so I'm sorry, K Wild. We'll go to the next voicemail. Hopefully, this one will be better for you. Phil, you better stop putting a picture every time you do the deed. We know it's me, Walter. It's White. It's fucking Walter White. He's calling on in. I'm back. I'm watching every street. I never left New Hampshire. I'm here with Kevin Costner. <laughs> Kevin Costner. <laughs> the real song. <laughs> Thank you so much, Walter White, for calling on in from the grave. We get we get so many calls. We got Mike Aaron Trout from the grave. We got Walter White from the grave. You guys are amazing. I'm gonna get to all of your voicemails. We still have Five more voicemails and 17 text messages. If you haven't already and you have a comment or a question, something you want to get into the show, please call in 781 990 8509. Voicemail line is still open. We're not going anywhere anytime soon. Uh, so awesome to have all of you guys here tonight. I'm keeping the party going as long as possible here, as long as we keep having voicemails and keep having texts, keep having super chats. Gonna keep going tonight. Uh, and uh, keep this party going as long as possible. Make these three, to make a meal out of these final three episodes. Will the next episode be a Kim episode? I don't know if it's going to be a full Kim ep- episode, but I expect to see Kim in the next episode. Area code 718. Hey, Phil, Big J here. Big J. Um, sorry about the late voice, man. I love this episode. I watched the. This is our big big J. If you're listening right now, I actually ended up playing your voicemail from last week on uh, my stream with uh, my partner in crime, Tony Teflon. Uh, thank you so much for being literally one of one of our oldest and longest viewers and supporters. Big J has been watching us since the beginning of our Better Call Saul coverage in season one, or maybe you came in on season two. I, I kind of forget, but. Uh, Big J is awesome. Let's see what Big J thought. Been a little bit late. Um, to have it on the uh, AMC. You know, I didn't watch it on the uh, on the cable. I watched it on the um, whatever the hell that is, the app. So uh, yeah, it was on like late for me, but it was a it was a great episode, and I'm so sad the show's coming to an end. Um, it's it's wild, you know. It's it's wild how they really, you know. Tying this in now, it's like it, it's like you're watching Breaking Bad now, basically. I mean, but they did such a great job, and um, you know, I love this show more than Breaking Bad. I did love Breaking Bad, but it was great seeing Walter and Jesse tonight. You know, uh, I definitely. Uh, I'm gonna make a me- like they did something. I'm gonna make a meal of Big J's message here because he left us a nice long voicemail. So. This is the big question as we're moving forward. I think both series are equally as awesome. 
This isn't about what's the better series because both series and I don't want to hear that shit. Both series. I mean, yeah, I, I can hear that shit. I don't care. Give, get the debate. But it's not what's the better series because I think both series are equally as awesome and well done within the universes that they do. But which series do you like more? That's the question I want to know because both of them are awesome. I'm not let's let's not play that both these series don't set out to do what they want to do and achieve them 100 percent. Big J's right. The line between the two series is blended. We're in the sequel to Breaking Bad right now. But between the two series, and this isn't over, but we're going to have a podcast. I'm going to do this after we're done here, like an after series episode where we talk about Breaking Bad versus Better Call Saul. Hopefully I'll get some friends on it, maybe get Tony, maybe get my friend Matt to uh, talk about this stuff, uh, who's done my Sopranos recaps with me, but really get into this. But which one do you like better? That that's or which is better for you in that you enjoy more? Because both are equally as awesome. When we get down to it, this part of it's just taste. But uh, with the camera to make them look a little younger, um, especially Jesse. But uh, you know, it's it's just like he's. You know, he's just one of these people, you know, stealing and robbing to him. It doesn't matter. You know, he he can't do it the way he did it as a warrior. So now it's just like a drug to him. That's the way I take it. It's Shields, yes. Tonight was the night that the boys showed up. At this stage of the game where he's at, it's just like a drug to him. You know, it's. And it's like he's angry, and you know I. Cinnabon manager, what do I do? We need, need to do a poll for. Uh, copy paste what you want me to do for a, a poll for, and I'll throw it in here at the end. What 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 what, what question do you want me to pop up? I think he's um, he's got nothing else going on in his life. You know, it's like he wanted to get rid of this guy, but. You know, he needed him. You know, he it's like you wanted to get rid of this guy, but you know what? He could still get me drugs. Great, great fucking call, Big J. And I'm going to play the rest of your message, too. Uh, I just wanted to pop into what somebody said in the live chat. Inglewood Rose says, Kim is dead. C could he have gotten that information? Could he have found out that Kim passed away for some reason? It's certainly possible. Uh, I don't know if that would have made him as angry as it did. Uh, maybe sad, but maybe frustration too and anger. It's definitely certainly a possibility. And that's what this guy is to him. He's just a pawn. Jeffy, um, definitely Cabernet, you know, for when she's seen them arguing, I think she heard something. I think that computer that she's got, she's going to see him on that computer. I don't know if you guys talked about that. I, yeah, um, I think so too. I'm actually calling you late. Well, I didn't see the beginning of it. I'm going to rewatch your uh, podcast. But I think that's how it's going to go down. You're the best, brother. And, um, yeah, it's just wild, man. You know, better call Saul's over. This is all breaking bad now. And, it, it, I mean, it, it's, well, the dream timeline, you know, it, they're mixing it in. It's just, um, yeah, this ain't going to end well. But, um, all right, buddy. Yeah, saying, again, saying that you prefer breaking bad. I'm, both these shows are some of the two best of all time from a from a television drama, drama standpoint in this golden age of television that we're in with all these amazing television series and streaming series and blah 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 better call Saul and breaking bad are two of the very best whether whether we want to have the argument that the wire is the greatest series of all time whether we want to have the argument that the sopranos is six feet under like or uh, some something else we can have all those arguments we want I'm not having that argument right now. What I'm saying is both series are the greatest. Saying you prefer one for the other doesn't make the other one lesser. I'm just curious where people are on that in the sense of what their favorite is because it says that says uh, it it's just taste uh, because both series are equally as awesome. I've said this too many times for it to be special, but I'll say it one more time again. 
it's like they're Vince and Peter are two lo- of the best chefs in the world, and they have two signature dish- dishes. One is a little bit more spicy, and one is a little bit more savory. And it's which one do you like better? And neither one is a better meal. They're both equally as awesome and impressive in the way that they dictate your taste buds in your flavor profile. But you do have a preference. Some people do have preferences to one or the other. And I think I... I don't know. I'm waiting on my uh, my decision until I see the conclusion. But but yeah. So I'm right in the middle right now. It could go either direction. Robin William hatches an elaborate plan with help from his creative brother Frank Harvey Firestein, dressed as an old British woman, Mrs. Mrs. Doubt McGill. <laughs> Marion is a Twitter user. She's going to get on Twitter early. So we still have plenty of voicemails. Like I said, if you want to call in, in, the voicemail line is still open, everybody. Thank you so much. Thank you so much to our Super Chatters, too. Uh, this is area code 774. Hi, Sue. You know who I am. That's right. I'm Ringo. Oh, we got Ringo I now? Paul called you on the live stream. Yeah, yeah he, was say, he was saying that. You think that. you're a better drummer? Not quite. You're the best, Hello? Ringo. I love you, Ringo. No, you're good, buddy. I challenge you to a drum <gasps> in Liverpool. Okay? Meet me there. Ten o'clock. Right now. Ringo. Ringo. Don't listen to him until you go. Ringo, listen, buddy. It's, it's not fair. You want me to have a drum off in your hometown? I think I'm I'm in for trouble. I don't think it's gonna go good for me in that situation, Ringo. I, I think you have skills beyond skills. You have some skills that haven't even been invented yet, Ringo. So I, I have nothing but love and appreciation for what you added to the Beatles as a as a drummer and as a positive influence. So I can't drum battle you, buddy. Let's just jam. Let's have a good time, buddy. Come on, dude. Peace and love. Did you okay. We, you don't have to drummel. You already know you're a better drummer. Oh, fuck off. Phil, I'm going to cancel the stream if you <laughs> keep being on Paul's side. Don't cancel Anyways, me, Ringo. I gotta Ringo. go deal with some raccoons. I gotta go make some pelts. Ringo, don't cancel me, buddy. Uh, you and me can be friends. Let's let's jam. Let's just Let's just jam and hang out. Ringo, I appreciate you. I appreciate what you did for music and as a drummer. I love you, buddy. Erico 530. Yes, Mr. Sam. There's only two syllables in this whole wide world worth hearing. Yes, Pussy. <laughs> ah. Are you listening to me, Sam? I'm getting the pearls here. <laughs> okay I, I think we have some of the best voicemailers in the world right here and this is pretty hilarious uh we got a few more voicemails to get to here and uh then we'll get to our all of our text messages and uh like i said keep calling on in We're not going anywhere as long as we keep getting some voicemails that's when they thought i was out they pull me back here <laughs> all right Kate. just this one time what you ask me about my affairs. Now, sorry, never asked Kay about her affairs. Where did I miss? Did I miss this one? Oh, this is a short one. Hey, Badger. I really like this episode, man. <laughs> we got Badger. The skinny Pete didn't call, but we got Badger. Erico 909. Just a thought. Who is following Francesca the feds? I'm assuming that's what she's talking about, that agents or cops are trying to follow her to see if she knows who, where Saul is. Uh, personal situation. I don't want to talk too much about it because I'm not talking about it in a braggy kind of way. But when I was younger, uh, this friend of the family is uh, father was attached to some uh, mafia type business. He was to basically they had they ran a bunch of clubs 
that had these Pac-Man mach- Pac-Man machines, and they'd flip around and turn into like video poker at night. It was in the '80s, and and everything got busted. This guy we knew, whose father was sort of the kingpin of it all, he ran, and they would they would tap my phone because my mother it's a long story but basically uh the father of this guy ran so the son had to go to jail even though the son was sort of like not as involved in the business but they were looking for the guy that ran and my mother was friends with I don't know it's a long story. My my mother was friends with the guy that was in jail, so they tapped our phones to try to see if we knew where the guy was who was on the run. So they don't stop. They tap phones. They look. So Francesca is in that situation where she has the feds, she has authorities following her to see if she has any connection to Saul Goodman. But yeah, I dealt with some shit when I was a kid. True story. True story. I feel like the reason, this is area code 210, I feel like the reason the cops were at the house at the end of the episode is because the man with cancer who lived there died. I don't know why Jimmy would call the cops, though, if it was him because he wore the gloves unless there's any cameras around. There's no proof of him there. It seems like every prediction we have is wrong, though, and everyone is going to be thinking that the cops were there to arrest Jimmy, so that might not be the case. So, yeah, I, usually it isn't what exactly has it seems. Do you think the cancer patient guy has a chance to die and Jimmy is responsible for his death? That could be a really dark situation to go in. I'm hungry. I do definitely want some Cinnabons. Erico 310. Do you think Miriam will discover Saul on her new computer? Yes, I do think. Whether that's his downfall or not, I do think we're going to get a confrontation scene where Marion knows who he is and we have some interaction in that way. Uh, let's see. Area code. Hey, hotness. Oh, Skyler's deal was the lotto ticket with the GPS coordinates. It's T, by the way. T. Oh, did you call me hotness? Like I'm hot, like I'm sweating or like I look OK. Th- thank you, T. You're making me blush. Uh, say, say hello. Hey, better fuel, fuel. I think I saw my good buddy Mandrell in the chat earlier. I don't know if you're still sticking around Mandrell. Sorry. I didn't say hi to your earlier buddy, but got distracted by something. Great to see you, my friend. Who is Lalo? But, uh, but thank you, T. Oh, T, you're making me blush. Oh my goodness. Erico914. Um, when Jean begins scamming, glimpses of the color start fading. I feel like in the black and white, we've had moments of color pop in too. I don't know if it's my imagination. That could very well be one of those moments. I feel like we have had some moments of color seep on in. Oh, the porn bots are back. We're back porn bots. Let's see. Thank you. Don't, don't follow the porn bots. Don't do it. Don't do it. These bots love us. Uh, let's see. We do have – keep calling on in. I'm going to get through the text messages now and get, then get back to our voicemails. We have uh, a couple of voicemails in the tank right now. Call on in. I'm not ready to be done yet. So call on in, 781-990-8509. Leave us some voicemails, what you thought about this episode, where you think the season is going. Or maybe we might be visited by a character from the series at some point. There you go, 512. Uh, also, uh, press, press and texting, a uh, texting from Texas. Although I'm sad to see the better call Saul and I'm excited to watch through all the 11 seasons of this universe and now Camino back to back for the ultimate u- experience. Also, could we possibly see Kim show up in court someday? We will see Kim again one way or another. Erico 323. Hey, Phil, do you think the flashback scenes are there to fill us in or is Gene thinking back to the first encounter, Walt and Jesse, if that's the case, why do you think it is regret? Regrets. I think it's a lot of regret and a lot of his influence in turning into the person he is now. If the Walt scene isn't the drug deal at the CD hotel, they've wasted the scene. 513, I think you're right. <laughs> 541, I think Gene is getting the money together that's off the book so he can send it to Kim as it's ghost money. Very interesting perspective. Very Obviously a possibility too. Uh, I think he might keep trying to connect to Kim, but yet she keeps telling him to fuck off. 
Area code 610. Hey, Phil. I thought this was an interesting episode for many reasons, and it feels like there's so much to speculate on. However, the main thing eating at my brain with this show is how will it end for Kim? I really can't tell if we're going to see her again. We will. Or how it will work when we do see her. She's going to be very uh, conflicted. Her story is more concluded now than it was at the episode of 609, but I still think it's open-ended. The idea that it's been six years and Kim is still dumb with Jimmy makes me incredibly sad. I just can't tell if the direction that it's heading. Will we get a tearful reunion with Jean and Kim, or will she, she want nothing to do with him? After this episode, it makes me think that it's more down the lines that she'll want nothing to do with him. I did see the Breaking Bad statues, Cinnabon. I love it. Um, I posted the picture on my uh, community tab of that. There's a couple of fun pictures with Better Call Saul cast members hanging out with brother, Breaking Bad cast members. Ooh, we got some devils. Phil, do you think the promo clip, promo clip is Saul being arrested after? The, very possibly, but usually these clips aren't exactly what we think. Pete's live music. Do you believe that Saul really thought he could hide the assets from the feds? I thought that was a stretch. No, but I think he was hoping maybe one of those things would slip through the cracks. Jude from Chicago. Do you think that 613 is the last we'll see of Vince Gilligan in the Albuquerque universe? At least for a while. It's hard for me to imagine they would do another thing. I think what I want is for them to make new IPs and see the same creative team work on another thing. But if you're holding my head, my hand to the flame, I think we'll get at least one more something in this universe, even if it's a short or a 90 minute kind of movie film type thing. I think there's going to be enough positivity coming from this that you very much see, might see something else again, but it might be a few years. Hmm. <clears throat> The episode was about Gene Breaking Bad, says 203. 978, thank you, Phil, for an awesome show. It's Ryan. I thought the episode was decent. Gene is definitely Breaking Bad himself, almost heartless targeting that very nice man with cancer. Uh, Gene, I don't know why I said that, cancer, cancer. <laughs> it's a weird word for me to say considering my situation. Uh, Gene has no true friends and family. It is sad. It is sad the position he has put himself in and that he's stuck in. 608, Phil, I'm laughing at the people talking about Jesse looking older. The fan community has a meltdown with Jeffy's recasting. What do they fucking want? Jesse recasted to be young or the magic Aaron Paul to bring back the role. And that's how I feel too. I would rather have Aaron Paul playing the role. I don't care what he looks like. Does the characterization make sense? And it did to me. Uh, 419, this episode was exactly what I've been waiting for all season long. The cuts between the Breaking Bad and the better and the Gene timeline stuff was done so well. Me too. This is the episode. I would go as far as saying this is the episode I've been wanting since season one. I've been talking about getting an episode like this, and we actually fucking got it. 301. I thought this episode was great. Love the Walt and Jesse scene as well as the Mike scene. Saul should have listened to Mike. Gene is starting to spiral, and Kim might be able to save him. I don't know if anyone can save him at this point. Also, think this episode boosts last uh, boosts last week's episode. I think I've said this last week too. I think when we finally get these final three episodes, or final two episodes at this point, it's going to make last week's episode all the better. That was the setting the table for the final act. 803, why was Francesca then not showing no patience for taking the three o'clock clock when she was all three o'clock call when she was all about it before because that was before everything went crumbling down and we got the Walter case being the a high profile case that it was and everyone in the world looking for him and going through her trash and all of that nonsense I think all of that stuff is horrible uh Phil can you play sus studio and stream you're oh, you're all you're better than Peter Pepperland <laughs> also who is gut is Gus sus uh, the uh, the poopers. Uh, what is Sus Studio? I don't know what that is, but I would definitely love to play it. I would love to play a game. Uh, no one ever has Oz at the top. Oz is the best. Oz is one of my favorite shows of all time, and 
And I would put it right up there as in that echelon of great series. And it might be two or three of my favorite. Um, I did do an Oz review at some point, And I'm going to go back and eventually do a complete Oz rewatch looking at every episode or at least every season. Great series. Uh, we have two more voicemails to get to right now. We just got another text message. Let me get to that quickly before we go to our last couple of voicemails. But still... <laughs> Phil Collins, the studio. Uh, still plenty of time. Let's get a couple more calls in here. Hi, this is Brendan Fraser. I was calling. Fraser. I heard that there's an audition for uh, a radio talk show live stream <laughs> event at uh, the Liverpool Stadium. Yeah, I re- really should be fired at this point. I'm supposed to... Uh, Phil, what did I think about the teaser? Let's and I've been ignoring it a little bit tonight. Let's get into the live chat at this point. Take a couple of your messages. I'll go back to the last couple of voicemails to kind of close out the night. But right now, get your comments in the live chat. Get get those uh, chats in. Let's let's get into it. Please do an Oz rewatch. No one has an episode breakdown on YouTube. What's interesting about that? And I don't want to say this because I don't want to encourage anyone to do it. I did a Oz video a couple of years ago, and it still gets views. It's one of my long one of my best sort of evergreen videos where I put it out and it had no views. It had like a hundred views when I put it out. And now I think it has like 12,000 or something because there's not much Oz content anywhere. No one, not many people cover that show and it's one of my favorite. So it's something I definitely want to look back. And I think better call Saul, the Sopranos breaking bad, all these series wouldn't have happened if it wasn't for Oz. I think Oz is the foundation of this era of television. Sopranos gets the credit. Oz did the work. Um, Did you notice the two guys that were watching Jackie? Yes, Jackie Chan's Adventures. I love that. Um, Oz. (laughs) J.K. Simmons was ridiculously horrible. Everyone that like watched, uh, uh, what was it? Uh, Whiplash and saw J.K. play a dick. We're like, oh, I couldn't believe he could play that. I was like, did you guys watch Oz? He was the hor- most horrible person ever. Deadwood was really good in the first season, but gradually got worse. I agree. I like Deadwood, but I don't quite like it in the later seasons as much as I like the excuse me, early parts. Another series that doesn't get as much credit as it deserves is Six Feet Under. I think that's a great series from beginning to end. It's a different kind of series. It's not super exciting at all times, but I think it is super effective in the series it's trying to dictate. And I think the reason why I'm talking about this stuff is because Better Call Saul, as we're reaching its conclusion, and I'm reaching the conclusion of this podcast, is... making its case for being in this discussion, sitting at this table for one of the greatest series of all time. So it should be discussed with all these other ones that we're mentioning. Imagine if HBO, it would have been interesting to Kyra's pitch. I think as much as I love AMC, I would have loved to see Vince with an HBO, like getting on, getting on that stuff. Hi Lotus. Are you back? You're back on the show. I forgot you were sitting right there. So many people could kill Gene at this point or turn him in. There's a lot of possibilities. Uh, Phil, have you thought about doing Marvel content? I absolutely have. Uh, I have in the past, but mainly Daredevil. I will be covering Daredevil when that comes to Disney+. Plus. I don't know about other stuff, but I will be covering Daredevil 100%. I'm down to cover anything, anything. If you have any suggestions, please get it in. Uh, one of the things on the super chat wheel too. I'm not like trying to trying to trying to beg for super chats, but one of the things if I spin the wheel is a review of your choice. So you guys are welcome to welcome to uh, grab something like that. Uh, I have covered Marvel stuff, but mainly Dare Daredevil is my favorite thing. So I will be covering the new season when that jumps up again. That would be fun. Daredevil is cool. I'm not a big fan of all of the, all the stuff, but. I am a big fan of the Daredevil series on Netflix and just in the first season of Jessica Jones, especially and Punisher and half of the seasons of uh, 
of uh, Luke Cage as well. Iron Fist, we don't talk about that. <laughs> I think Breaking Bad owes a lot to Mad Men. AMC was just starting up. I think Breaking Bad and I think Better Call Saul is more comparis- more comparative to Mad Men than it is to any other series. Uh, the This kind of stakes that you have on Better Call Saul, even though Better Call Saul has that different gear when we get towards the Breaking Bad stuff, uh, that's an element of it. I think it's it celebrates and really investigates its characters in the way that Mad Men did. And I think Mad Men's a forgotten about series because it's not as sexy as Breaking Bad or The Sopranos or some of those other series that deal with uh, drug kingpins and other situations. You're dealing with advertising. There's only so intense it can be. But I think as a quality series from beginning to end doing what it wants to do, I think Mad Men's one of the best and deserves to be in the that discussion as one of the greatest series in this in this era of television. For for sure. Uh because it's bad. X Y Z K R A. It's just it's kind of bad. The wire is definitely in the discussion for the goat. I know <clears throat> Tony Teflon strongly believes The Wire is the greatest series of all time. I know people believe that too. I believe it's at that at that table, at that greatest of all time table. It's sitting there just with Better Call Saul and Breaking Bad too. Uh, we got one more voicemail and a few more texts to listen to. Let's listen to area code 774. Hi, this is Jesse Ventura. Yeah, that's right. Navy Seal, just even sure. The body? I got a problem with the chat. What's your problem, Jesse? Specifically when they crap all over the Sopranos. That's a good show, isn't it? So is Breaking Bad. Maybe not better called Saul. Because I didn't get the role as Saul. I could have been a good Saul. I wanted to wear a wig. Um, to answer your question, Cinnabon Manager, 100%. My co-host that wasn't able to join me this season but joins me in a lot of stuff, Joe Dirty Locks, my be- one of my best friends in the world, is uh, a huge Last of Us video game fan. So we're 100 million percent going to be covering The Last of Us. If you're wondering what other series we're going to be doing, I'll be doing review, uh, doing a live stream on Cobra Kai when that airs, maybe the right after it airs. I'll be doing The House of Dragon that's coming out soon. I'll be doing, unfortunately, just because we did it from the beginning, so we have to close it out, we'll be doing The Walking Dead's final season. Uh, I will be doing The Last of Us when that airs 100%. I'll be doing the series From uh, when that comes back on Epics. A lot more, too, but those are a few that I'll be doing coming up. But uh, we do have another voicemail, too, so let's play this voicemail for right now. I'm not ending this until we're done with voicemail, super chats, or texts. I'm not. I'm going to make a meal out of these final three episodes, final two episodes. JT from NYC. Um, I just have three points. Um, The first being um, Jimmy and Chuck are both brothers. Um, Apple doesn't fall far from the tree. Could him, you know, going back to skin and scheming being like – Chuck, when he got better, and then ended up, you know, kicking the lamp on the table to eventually cause the fire. Could this be um, Jimmy's way of doing that um, by going back to skin? Very possible. Um, point number two, um, when you think about what Kim said to him um, after he was trying to appeal his law license being um, suspended, she said, anytime you call, I'll be there, all that type of stuff. So um, could we be seeing him? She did say anytime she calls him, she'll be there. But she actually, when she talked to him before, seemed pissed. So could they have had more interactions that we're going to see in further episodes between the two of them? I think it's certainly a possibility that we might see Kim in the next episode have interactions with him during the Better Call Saul uh, Breaking Bad timeline. All in her bluffs, she said, um, you know, I'm done with. Yes, I will be doing the final season of The Walking Dead. We've done it this far, even though it sucks. We'll be doing the final season. Um, 
not the first four episodes. I'll be doing shorter reviews for the first four episodes because it could coincide with House of Dragon. Uh, so I will be doing the probably the final four episodes. We'll be doing recaps. Basically, after the final episode of Better Call Saul, I will be live at around 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on Sunday evenings instead of Monday evenings. So if you're enjoying my silliness, you want to jump on in with me, this is going to be shifting from Mondays to Sunday nights. And just because this is the end of the season of Better Call Saul and the end of the series, I'm still going to be doing Better Call Saul stuff too. We're going to be occasionally doing streams about this discussion. So make sure you stay subscribed, even if you're just down for Better Call Saul stuff. This isn't the last time I'll be talking about the Better Bad universe. If you were, you know, seeing if he gets in trouble, will he come back and, you know, um, be there for him? Like she really um, said before, um, point number three, you have to think about the duality between um, Breaking Bad and Better Call Saul um, with Walt um, flashing all the way back to like the beginning of the. Thank you, Gorb TV. I hope you really are live doing a breakdown of my breakdown. That would be fucking amazing, buddy. <laughs> Love you. That's incredible. The first season um, with Gretchen and Elliot and that wrapping up the show. And I feel as though that's the same thing with Jimmy and his friend who died um, that they kind of showed early in the f first season of flashbacks and then, like, in the third season um, with him dying. Um, basically, him ending up like oh, he wow. did now. I'm gonna... um, he had a job and, you know, and he wanted to scam, scheme, and, you know, he begged him to stay. And... I'm going to play the rest of this message, but I have to say right now i got to pause this and celebrate and thank all of you guys that have been watching tonight. Everyone that's tonight that has subscribed has helped push me over. Uh, we're still small, but we're growing. Uh, you just helped me get to 15,000 subscribers. We, we crossed over tonight. We're at <clears throat> 15,005 subscribers. We crossed over from 14,000 to 15. Thank you so much to all of you guys that subscribed tonight. Uh, it means more to me more to me than you imagine. I'm going to try to keep building this as much as possible in these final two episodes, but I was hoping to reach that 15 this season and we did it. So huge celebration to all of you guys for making this happen for me. It's really on all of you. So as much as I love, I love what we do here, it wouldn't be anything if it wasn't for you guys in the live chat, sharing your thoughts and your live voicemails and your texts in your live chats and making sure you subscribe. So thank you so much as we just hit that 15,000. Thank you so much, everybody. That is fucking awesome. Incredible. Let's play the rest of his voicemail. And he stayed for one more scan and he ended up dying. Um, could that be like a foreshadowing of what this particular ending is going to be? Because, you know, he kind of has a job and, you know, he's out of the game and, you know, is he going to go back in and, you know, want to run again. And then... I will 100%, uh, whoever just said this, Miss M. Arbo, I will be covering Invincible. Invincible is like my favorite thing that's come out in the last couple of years. But I do have two videos on Invincible, one with me alone, one with Joe on the channel already. Please search them out. I love talking about that series, and I hope it gets super popular because I'm going to be talking about every episode. I don't care if I have 100 people watching. For I don't, I don't care if those, vi those videos get 100 views total. I'm going to be talking about Invincible because that show is incredible. Same with the boys. It's awesome. This is going to be the last job that doesn't mean, you know, just some thoughts. All right, thanks. Thank you, everyone in the live chat. That means a lot. Let's play this voicemail a little bit. Hey, fellas, Dracarys. Oh, my God. I... Oh, this is from another episode. Sorry, Dracarys. I think I didn't play your message from... From uh, last time, it will, probably won't make sense. Here's area code 608. Still time to get your voicemails in, guys, if you want to get your last-minute voicemails in. Now's the time. We're going to start to wrap things up pretty soon. 781-990-8509. Get your voicemails in. This reminds me of my old radio shows going for three and a half hours. We're going to go three-plus hours every week here for the final two weeks, so I'm, I'm so glad you guys are joining us. So let's listen to this voicemail. Uh, this is Teabag from Milwaukee, and I was just thinking that maybe uh... we still got 300 plus people here. I can't end right now. We got 300 plus fucking people here. Fuck this shit. And thank you guys in the live chat for that uh, that, that rhetoric. <laughs> Keep that coming. I know. Uh, I know. Uh, uh, I'm, I'm going to shut my mouth. I'm drunk. 
Jimmy's going to end up like a like a regular Rupert Pupkins, you know, and uh, he's going to end up having to do his time. But in the pro- oh, sorry, I I, I fucked I fu- I fucked that one up. Uh, Cinnabon manager, you want that to happen? Jump in the chat of that particular person and tell them to invite me on. That's the best way to make stuff like that happen. Um, uh, it's with you guys in the chat pushing that stuff. T- a tweet at them. If you if there's a certain channel you want me on or you want Tony on or you want us on, tweet at those motherfuckers. Get at them. Tell them to have one of us on and we'll make it happen. Uh, this is T-Bag from Milwaukee, and I was just thinking that maybe uh, Jimmy's going to end up like a, like a regular Rupert Pupkins, <laughs> you know, and uh, he's going to end up having to do his time, but in the process, he's going to become famous and only have to do a short prison sentence, and then he's going to get out, and that's... Only Murders in the Building is having an excellent season, and I will be doing a live stream with Tony Teflon, the wonderful, amazing Red Lipstick Club, Anna, and myself after the Better Call, Better Call Saul season, recapping and talking about the whole season of the show. Uh, it might be a little late after the show airs, but Only Murders is an awesome show, and we will be doing the live stream. Again, I don't care if I get 100 views. I'll be talking about it. I will always do videos with Carmine, Jackie C. Carmine is as close to me as anybody on this YouTube platform, except for Tony, you know, Carmine and Tony are my two uh, favorite people in this universe out here and, uh, and two legitimate real friends. Carmine's always welcome on this channel and he knows it and we'll pop on here and there as well. And we'll definitely be doing stuff with him in the future too. He's the best. It's uh, when they do the American greed special and uh, he gets to wear his colorful suits and relive his glory days telling stories about how he used to rip people off like uh, that uh, like that Jordan Belfort guy does now, you know? Ha-ha. <laughs> Something like that, you know? Wolf of Wall Street shit. Well, regular Rupert Pupkins, you know? You know, like King of Comedy, you know? All right, that's all. King of Comedy is a very underrated Martin Scorsese movie. I love it. I think it's good. Uh, obviously, it had a, uh, a lot of comparisons or a lot of uh, associations with the Joker movie was inspired by it a great deal. Uh, but so many Martin Scorsese movies get a lot of attention, Raging Bull, Goodfellas, uh, Wolf of Wall Street. Uh, there's there's so many amazing Martin Scorsese movies. I feel like King of Comedy gets forgotten about. It's also a very unique kind of role for Robert De Niro. Uh, so I, I do re- highly recommend that. I mean, movies age in weird weird ways but I do think that movie is incredible do I think we'll see Skylar White no after tonight's episode I don't think we're going to see any of the characters we were talked about through Francesca in an unlike Better Call Saul Breaking Bad universe way we were told not shown about some of our Breaking Bad characters in an epilogue kind of fashion I don't think we're going to see Skylar I don't think we're going to see Kubi I don't think we're going to see Huel again I think this was the last mention of all of those characters. Cape Fear. Counselor. Soft Batch. Counselor. Um, Soft Batch. I corresponded with YouTubers who do excellent breakdowns, and he said he thinks he would suck live. I told him he couldn't be worse and more boring than the Poovers. I'll try again. I think he's amazing. Joker was a, yeah, it was a king of comedy taxi kind of uh, influenced situation, 100%. There's a lot of king of comedy in that. And uh, it's, a, it's kind of a forgotten about movie through history. Another good De Niro movie, some people might not have watched, not a Scorsese movie, but interesting to see Bill Murray play a tough guy and De Niro play kind of a, a wimp, uh, is uh, Mad Dog in Glory. Uh not a great movie, but a good underrated movie. Okay, so area code 909. Let's see. Just had a thought. Who is following Francesca the Fed? Uh, have you seen Mr. Robot? They say it's one of the goats. Excuse me. I saw the first season of Mr. Robot, and I loved it. It was really good. 
for whatever reason, I didn't watch further seasons, and it's not because I didn't enjoy it. I think the first season of Mr. Robot was excellently done. I just didn't proceed further on it for whatever reason, but I will catch up at some point. Uh, Barry also has potential to be one of the best shows. Barry's another show I haven't given a chance yet. I see it on HBO. It has a lot of people in it that I enjoy. For whatever reason, I haven't watched it yet, but I will watch it at some point. Uh, Area code 423. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. Area code 423, who is T. Um, she's got her sh- she's got her Saul shirt on. Um, how do I say this in the most respectful way? You are unbelievably gorgeous, uh, T. T sent me a uh, a picture with her Saul shirt on, and she has some of the most unbelievable eyes I've ever seen. Wow. I wish I could show that picture right now, but it's not connected to the computer. I can do screen sharing on, and I wouldn't want to show you either if you didn't want to be shown. But uh, T, wow. Golly. <laughs> Golly me, T. Uh, you look very gorgeous in your shirt. Uh, as I uh, as I as I blush a little bit here and get pause. Oh my goodness, uh, T, you are you are be- you are one beautiful young lady. Okay, so uh, area code eight five nine. I theory theorize that Saul has. Oh golly, I theorize that Saul has surmised that Kim was devoured by Hugh. That's one of my favorite joke theories in all of the history of Better Call Saul, the, the Huel ate Saul thing. Yeah, T's making me blush right now. Um, oh, n- I, all the respect in the world, T, you are, you are, you're definitely making me blush. Um, it's a song and a scene with Brian Cranston in the Malcolm in the Middle, which is hilarious, says uh, 774, clearing fine. And... For now, our last voicemail or text right now. We've got plenty of time for you to get more in if you want. Uh, Marion's going to turn Gene in and use the money to move to Florida with Jeff. I don't think it's beyond the realm of possibility that Marion is going to turn Jeff in. Uh, I'm like, T, message me privately. We'll, we'll, we'll discuss this off air. But no, T, you look amazing. Uh... Play that. Keep it in your pants. I I know exactly. I think I think that's I think that's what you need. I think we need uh, the Walter Walter keep it in your pants scene one more one more time. Where 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 is that? I think we need to uh, see what our voicemails of the night are. Wait, those are te- I'm sorry, I'm in my text messages. But everyone, now's the time. Now's for the last minute voicemails and text. If you wanna, if you wanna get on in, now's the time. Seven eight one nine nine zero eight five zero nine. But I do have to hear this message after I saw T's T's text. Put your dick away, Walter. Thank you. I will. I I will. So, sorry. I, I'll make sure of that. Everybody, thank you so much. Let's let's finish our poll here. Let's end our poll results. Oh my God, this is a la- actually a lot closer. The last couple of weeks we've been we've been pretty crazy with our polls and the way that they've been one sided. But uh, who did Gene talk to on the phone? Kim or somebody uh, telling him about Kim? Fifty five percent say someone telling him about Kim. Forty four percent say Kim with fourteen hundred votes. Wow, awesome. Uh, so it's split down the middle, not down the middle, but we obviously have, it's close. It's close enough to be debatable. Uh, so last point here before we go, what do you guys think? Was he talking to Kim or was he talking to somebody else? (laughs) Put your dick away, Walter. We can flirting with view on stream. I know I I was trying, I I'm in a difficult position. Do I flirt on stream? I, I, that's just a bad look. But no, T. You're, you're, thank you so much for being uh, for sh- for sharing. Hoo I can't stay long. <laughs> but everyone, now is as good a time as any. I will be back next week with more silliness, more fun. Uh, we'll be back again right after the episode airs for these final two episodes. If you haven't, please hit that subscribe button. Please hit that uh, that 
that uh, notifications bell so you can make sure you know every time I go live. I might put out a video midweek, but possibly not. Oh, we do have we do have one more voicemail. Oh my goodness, someone else left a voicemail. This is probably telling me to take a cold shower. Area code eight seven zero. I enjoyed this episode. Um, yeah, I loved. You know, I, I enjoyed this episode a lot. Um, I like, you know, seeing Jimmy. Well, I like seeing well, Saul Goodman go back to a uh, ways. I like. I do wish we got the original actor for Jeff. They do doing a pretty decent job, but I do kind of prefer the original actor. But yeah, um, yeah. Um, by the way, just a one question. Who will you pick to pay a loan? Jason Pickman. If they did like a high school Jason Pickman. Who will you pick to pay a loan? Jason in high school. If anyone in the chat got any suggestions, tell me. Okay, so this caller, last last point. Who would I pick to play Jesse Pinkman in high school? I don't know. I don't know young actors good enough at this point in time to say, oh, hey, this person would be good. I'm not sure if I want that. I think that's an extra question to put out here at the end. We got two more episodes. This has been so much fun. There's still 300 people watching me right now after three and a half hours. We're, we're coming upon four hours of talking about this show right now. And I'm not, and I could go another hour right now. I'm only ending things because I probably should because it's uh, two o'clock in the morning right now. Uh, and I have to get up somewhat early tomorrow. But realistically, we're here talking about this show two and a half hours later. Is there so much passion, so much love for this universe that we should get more in it? To me, what I hope, and I've said this many times before, I hope this passion and love for this particular material transitions and and transfers to whatever Vince and Peter do next. Because I think these two guys, when they work together, create magic. And I hope, to endless hope, that they decide to work together again and create another amazing IP. Do I want to see more stories in this universe? If they make sense... I more want to see this creative team work together again and create something. This team makes some of the most amazing television I've ever watched in my life. Bar none. There's some great shows. There are. But these two series, and this isn't about what's better, what's worse. Both rides have been amazing. One was a little bumpier. (laughs) One was a little bit more, uh, took its time a little bit. But both rides were equally as entertaining as we got two more episodes for Better Call Saul. What I want more than anything, more than I want to see more Jesse Pinkman stories or more Gus stories or more Mike stories or more Skinny Pete and Badger, uh, Dude, Where's My Car sequel. Ladies and gentlemen, I can't believe it's 2 a.m. Thank you for another stream. Thank you guys for making this. You guys in the live chat make this stream amazing. But all of that is fine and good. But what I really want to just see, what I really care about, is that the creative entities that work on these two series make another one. So we can all get out here again and do this again. We got two more, everybody. This is going to be really, really fun. This la- this last situation, these last episodes are going to be amazing. And I can't wait to experience, to be the first line of defense after we get to watch these episodes and talk to you guys and enjoy this fun as I'm stalling for time till I get my closing music here. Where is it? Where's the damn song? I'm changing this because I'm getting... Uh, I'm getting copyrighted in this. Here we go. We're going to do this song. This was the original song that inspired Issues Program stuff. Everyone, if you haven't already, as I said, and you enjoyed this, hit the like button. Hit the subscribe button. Share the channel with a friend. I might do a video midweek, but if not, I'll be back next weekend. I mean next week. Next Sunday night. Next Monday night. Sorry. (laughs) I'm drunk. Next Monday night to do this all over again. I can't wait, everybody. (laughs) <laughs> Tro say it's it's only uh it's only eleven o'clock in California. You can go you can go on more.
Thank you so much, everyone, for the 15K. I still have 350 people watching. It's honestly, it's it's honestly tough for me to end when there's still this many people watching because you're like, you guys still want to hear more about this episode of Better Call Saul, don't you? Let me know in the live chat. It's tough to end, but you know, at at three and a half hours, I should probably I should probably end things right now. It's it's tough. T uh t say say hi when this is all done t if you're if you're serious no i'm kidding <laughs> everyone did mike go crook did mike go crooked cop in philly absolutely did a hundred percent did and uh and i don't know if i necessarily need to see this but it seems like he did go crooked cop in philadelphia uh this is so tough it's as big as a prom keep going do we have an encore here uh do we do we want to do on uh one more time let's see i mean Oh no, Jeopardy! Jeopardy! Is this Jeopardy? I know people are like, "Are you are you going to end things?" Does this guy know how to say goodbye? He's saying goodbye like seven thousand seven thousand times. Does he know how to say goodbye? I literally still have three hundred fifty people watching right now. It's tough to end when you have that many people watching. Obviously, you guys are having a good time, and you don't want me to stop. So you want me to go five more minutes? I I mean maybe I'll go five more minutes if you keep the questions coming. I'll go five more minutes. We'll see. Let's encore. Five more minutes. Let's do this thing. Let's go. I, I, I'll wait. I'll wait. I'm not, I'm not going anywhere. I do have to be up early tomorrow morning, but literally this is the last time we're going to get to talk about this universe for a long time. So let's see. One last time. Let's go. More. More, more, more. Let's do this thing. Uh, will we see the Kettlemans again? Uh, I hope we see the Kettlemans again. That would be funny to see some sort of connection with them in the in the Breaking Bad timeline. I doubt it necessarily, but I think we our last goodbye to them was the last time we saw them. Uh, but it it would be awesome to see them. They're so much a part of the beginning part of the series that was so much about comedy. So yeah, I'm still I'm still going right now for a few more minutes. Let's let's uh let's let's just wrap take a couple more of your questions live in the live in the live chat right now. Bro, I don't want to get you fired. <laughs> don't worry. Don't worry. You don't you're not gonna get me fired. Uh, please don't go. Please don't go, says Lady Stoneheart. Uh, if you guys want to get one last minute voicemail in, now is the time. Break the glass. Keep going. Nostrovia, everyone. Nostrovia. Oh, oh, oh. And that's the thing. The longer we go here tonight, as I mean, again, we're, we're down to around 300 people. But still, someone said this earlier. Remember when we started season six of Better Call Saul, everybody, the people that were with us? from the beginning we had 20 35 people i think we had 35 people that first night we're up here now 200 plus people after three hours and 43 minutes really appreciate all you guys i feel like i have to go longer i have to keep going just for you because you guys are giving this to me right now you know what i mean you guys are bringing this to me a busty kettleman you know how this goes What's your favorite episode so far? Um, I feel like so much is getting focused on the Howard things that happened. I don't want to take away with how awesome the Nacho end was. I think the beginning of the season was incredible, too, the way that the Nacho story ended. That's one of my favorite moments of the season as well. Excuse me. This episode made me realize that the last episode didn't need to happen. Maybe, I think the last episode, and those of you that had problems with it, my thing with the last episode is I think it needed to happen to show that time shifts can happen in this series. And that anything can happen at any any situation at any time. <laughs> I know the, pr the pressure is real, Lady Stoneheart. No, the last episode gave Jamie a... Gave Jimmy a taste back. Absolutely. And it also showed Jimmy at the highlight point. Like the first time you try the drug again. And it's good time. And then it, you try it again. And it's it's awful. It's awful. And you start to break down. You start to lose your shit. And I think that's where this episode was. He's starting to break bad. He's starting to go down a bad road again. And he's. There's nowhere that can be go good. There's nowhere that can go good from there. We got the bots. See. Again, that's how I know I'm doing good tonight. We got the we got the robots. You robots make this amazing tonight. Thank you, Dracarys bitch, for for slicing them down. My problem was uh, we we would still have 350 people, but I said good night, so half the people thought I was actually going going to 
going good night. But as long as people keep asking me questions, I, I, can't, I can't help but keep going. <laughs> I swallowed those pills. Last through, last episode threw me back to Breaking Bad times, and uh, it's it's uh, this series is making me feel like I remember it. I'm remembering back down to breaking breaking bad times. I'm getting to relive this emotional experience again that I got to enjoy watching the final episodes of Breaking Bad on this channel. The first videos I ever posted on this particular channel. Granted, I was going live on an app called Ustream or a website called Ustream. I don't know if anyone remembers that back in the day, but I would go live on Ustream for a few people and uh, then upload the video to YouTube. And that those were the first things I posted on this channel. So it's very fun to kind of come back all the way through and be talking about this series. This show has, this show in the Gilligan universe, so to speak, has always been super important to the channel that I do and what I do. Exactly, the bots meme we're doing good right now. It is giving me those kind of vibes. Season five, uh, better call, Breaking Bad vibes. I'm doing it again. My dog is loving it. I love I love when Lotus is on the stream as well. Yeah, Ustream. We had Justin TV, which was one of the precursors for uh, for for or I mean Twitch existed at the time too. But Justin TV was sort of the alternative that if it wasn't video games owned by Twitch. But yeah, I was on Ustream for a while. Better Call Saul's number one favorite show. It's definitely one of mine too. I absolutely love it, and I'm going to miss it. I don't know what I'm going to do. Like, it, this has been so much fun to talk about this series with you guys. I'm not looking forward to, uh, to it ending. And, I mean, I've talked about this a little bit, but I've tried to avoid this discussion. But since we're late and this is sort of the, the after show situation, uh, I feel like I can talk about it. I'm excited that this show is ending. I really am. I 100% like I'm excited to see how it concludes and where it goes, but I'm going to miss it cuz I don't think we're going to get I don't think it's guaranteed we're going to get more in this universe. I don't think it's guaranteed that this creative team will all work together again at the same time. So, I'm trying to enjoy and lay back and love every single moment that we enjoy in this final season. <clears throat> I miss Nacho too. That's why I have him on my screen in every single fucking episode that I'm that I'm streaming again. I want to keep him on the stream. Holy shit, we just jumped up. We went from uh, about 291 viewers to uh to uh to over 300 again as we keep going here. This is incredible. Uh and thank you so much. You are amazing. Uh I appreciate that. <clears throat> no, they better win the Emmy this year. I'm still pissed off. I know it doesn't matter, but it still matters on some level to the actors and to the jobs they get in the future. They, She better win the Emmy. I'm still pissed off that, um, uh, that Michael McKeon didn't win the Emmy for his work on the series because I thought he was just so fucking incredible in what he did. Uh, so I hope they get their justice. I will be. I used to do this before when I lived in my Salem place, uh, but I'm going to do a live stream of the Emmys uh, where I'm just hanging out, watching them live, and I hope you guys will join me for that, and we will do that live, and we will fucking drink and celebrate Better Call Saul getting the recognition that it deserves. Does that stuff matter? really realistically know who gives a fucking shit. It's all bullshit, but it matters to the actors and getting more work in the future. And I hope Ray gets tons of work. I hope, I hope uh, Lalo, the actor that plays Lalo. I hope Nacho. I hope they all get tons of work and winning awards can definitely help them down that particular road. Hey, what's going on behind that fishbowl? I'm fishbowling my apartment right now. This is a Pinkman pizza party. Let's do this thing. I'm going to miss it. I believe both shows are 100% excellent. They just offer different same world experiences. Emmy party. Yes, we're going to do an Emmy party. 
This is going to be a fun year. Uh, I know we might not get these crazy numbers with uh, 300 plus people watching me at close to four hours here. Uh, at this point, we're 10 minutes away from four hours. Let's say that. We're going to wait. We're going to go 10 more minutes here, hit the four hour point, and call this a stream. Uh, but we still got almost 300 people or 300 plus people. Let me look. 300 plus people watching us here live after four hours. This is fucking amazing. We might not get these kind of numbers again this year, but we're going to do this a lot more. Going to do uh, the live watch of uh, the Emmys in Celebrate for Better Call Saul and see if we can get these awards. We're going to do a lot more television shows, and I hope you guys stick with me and stick through to keep watching all of this stuff. Uh, we see I am... <laughs> I am pink tea, not green tea. Oh, my goodness. Uh, Area code 423T, you are making me sweat, golly. Just 10 minutes and just 10 minutes and 300 people. That is really amazing. And I don't want to talk about that stuff <clears throat> too much, but I feel really lucky right now to have all of you guys joining me to be able to talk about this episode. It only makes it all the more fun to be able to share this experience with all of you guys. She should win best. Act. I agree. I think she's one of the best actors working right now, and I hope she gets lots of work. I, I hope I get a chance to interview her too or meet her or something like that because I would love to express how amazing her performance is. She, uh, she could have been a throwaway character or what a, whatever love interest for Jimmy, but she became just as important to the end of the series as... Jean is. I want to know what happened to her. I want to see where she's at. And they've set up a situation where she could be dead as much as I... This is where they've gone with this. They've gone from a point in this season where I'm like, Kim is possibly dead. Kim could get killed by Lalo. She's going to die. No, she's fine. There's no chance she could die. And then to this point where what we saw with the Saul scene, with him freaking out in the phone booth, could actually mean she died. And now she's possibly dead again. It's it's so much of the emotional buildup of this series is based around Kim. And it's incredible. Are you guys smelling some smoke? I'm sorry. There's some smoke going on right now. She is. She's incredibly gorgeous, Jacob. No argument out of me. So everyone, you are amazing so what were some of your favorite parts of this episode or favorite parts of this season what are you hoping to see in this final two in these final two episodes someone asked earlier how could this final season disappoint me i am now convinced without a shadow of a doubt that this show will n not disappoint me in the finale uh unlike something like dexter which failed twice in giving you two pathetic endings I think the Gilgan universe is going to give you two awesome endings. I don't know what it's going to be. It might not be exactly what I want it to be or what I predict it to be, but I know it's going to be unbelievably awesome. I want more Jesse and Saul. You're going to get more Jesse and Saul. You're definitely going to get that. You're going to get a couple more scene, at least one more scene of Jesse alone with Saul. Or at least an alone Jesse scene. You're going to get one more scene of Walter. Did people enjoy the Walter and Jesse scene that we got in this episode? Or is it too member berry for you? I know a couple people might have different opinions. For me, it was absolutely perfect. They both melted into the character. I know Aaron Paul doesn't look the part, but he played the part perfectly for me. In his interactions with Walter White and with Brian Cranston, who's one of the greatest actors of all time, and delivered an amazing performance tonight, adding so much texture to the universe by adding more elements to Saul Goodman during the Breaking Bad timeline. These guys are the greatest show creators of all time, and I can't wait to see more of what they do. Take a couple more chats and let's wrap this up. Thank you guys so much for forcing me for an enco encore. I can't get enough of talking to you and I'm not tired yet. So let's keep going here. 
Does it turn back to color? I do think eventually it does. It's hard for me to imagine that the rest of the new scenes that we get on this show, meaning scenes moving forward, are all in black and white. I do think eventually it does sort of melt to color. But who knows? I can't believe Breaking Bad will end in 2015. Uh, so what was the individual Walt scene, individual Jesse scene? I saw both of them together very much. It's going to be in a future episode, Trocar. Uh, and pros- probably next episode since Vince Gilligan's directing it. I assume that the the next Walter and Jesse scene are going to be in those episodes in a future moment dealing with them moving forward. It's going to be fun to see when those two pop up. I'm glad it wasn't all in one episode, so it stretched out a little bit. And if this one scene with Walter and Jesse together is an indication of how the other two scenes are going to go, I'm super freaking excited to see what these scenes are like. The Walter scene especially, but I'm very curious how they're going to do the Jesse scene. And seeing Aaron Paul get to do a little bit more should be excellently fun. I guess they already did change the color. Yeah, they did change the color with the Breaking Bad stuff, but I do think the Gene stuff eventually will turn to color as well. I don't know when. I don't know how, but I do think it's going to happen. We got four minutes here, then we're going to wrap this up. Yes, the next two episodes are... The next episode is written and directed by Vince Gilligan. The final episode is written and directed by Peter Gould. So we're down to our main guys doing these final episodes and saying goodbye to this world. It's going to be perfect. I can't wait to see where Vince goes with, goes in this next episode. It's going to be very interesting. And I appreciate all of you guys joining on in the discussion and making this exceptionally fun. I'm not counting down the seconds. I'd keep going here. (laughs) I'm not leaving. I'm waiting. I'm progressing till next week. Whoa. My my camera's going all over the place. It keeps whoa, it keeps it keeps going down over there. Wait, camera. Stay where you now I'm some weird Breaking Bad angle of some sort. Is that where we are? I'm going to do I think I'm going to do a video because it seems like the, the, the titles videos have been good for me. So I think, I'll do a, I think I'll do a video on the final two episode titles and what they could possibly mean. Not only am I drunk, it seems like my, ca- my, uh, my camera is drunk. Let me, let me uh, turn this off for a second. Sorry about that. I don't think we, I don't think we have a happy ending. I definitely, I think it's a bittersweet kind of ending. Partially good, partially bad. Just like this pot, just like this podcast. You guys are amazing. Love you guys. I'll talk to you next week. Say hi. Be, uh, T just said, be my Jim. I will 100% be your Jimmy. Except I won't like get someone murdered in front of you. I'll just be loyal. Sloppy Phil, gotta make Monk Mike clean up this mess. Romeo, you're right. The end of this podcast definitely needs to be cleaned up. It's a fucking mess. <laughs> Microphone POV. Good night, everybody. Good night, T. My my online girl. <laughs> Trocar. Thank you so much for the super chat donation. That's one more shot for you, my friend. <laughs> 